Boom. We're back. Um, yeah. So I took a break uh, to welcome the newest member of my family, Estelle, into the family and just enjoy time with the kids. It's super, super important when you have this opportunity to take it and make sure you make the most of that. Now, that said, it did come at a really bad time for tablet content. 24.2 had dropped. And actually leading up to me taking time off, I was even more busy because of a bunch of other things going on in life. Um, and so I took a break and I was a little bit behind the schedule. And so here we are with the video again. But just to say, look, we've got a ton of content to get through. 24.2, I haven't even covered some of the main features, multi-factor analysis, so many things to cover there. Uh, and then we have 24.3 just around the corner. So I'm going to have to start straddling two releases at the same time over the next month and a half. And then we're going to be at DataFam Europe. That's a new Tableau conference here in Europe. So that's going to be super exciting because it's in my hometown, London. Uh, so we've got a long run up to Christmas and hopefully we'll have lots of content every single week. In today's video, I'm talking to Kirk Munro. Now, Kirk and I exchange conversations all the time on LinkedIn. He's the kind of person where you know he just has so many useful insights over the years with Tableau. He's a very esteemed member of the Tableau community, and he's also written a book about data modeling in Tableau. So what I said to Kirk is, hey, Kirk, instead of us having these sort of small exchanges on LinkedIn and in various places in LinkedIn DMs, let's just have the conversation here on the channel. And we talked for two hours. So full disclosure, the whole conversation unedited is right here in this video. It's two hours. Yes, it's long. It's more like a podcast. Um, we don't do any screen sharing. We're just focused on talking about these topics. I think it was really valuable to get his time and his experience of what he's seen in the industry in this conversation. So as ever, everything is timestamped. It's super clearly laid out. And we covered everything from data modeling, uh, some of the sort of conceptions around data modeling, but also some of the missed opportunities. And then secondly, we talked about Tableau's future, some of the AI capabilities, but also the way Tableau is positioning quite a few things. Now, the context of this is we recorded this a month and a half ago, and I've only just got around to releasing this video now. So if it looks like we haven't watched the most recent Dreamforce event, that's probably what the context is there. But nonetheless, as ever, Let's get stuck in. Oh, it's good to say that again. Kirk, how are you? I'm doing great. Good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad we set this up. I, I did my best at ignoring you for about a month and a half, and then uh, <laughs> I finally picked up the the memo and the message you about three weeks ago to say, "Hey, when are we doing this?" And mm -hmm. realized it was me that was uh, not replying to you. <laughs> well, you, you have more important stuff going on. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no, it's a pretty, pretty hectic time of time in my life. But uh, I appreciate your patience and sort of uh, agreeing to come on at very short notice. So I think we, we pinned this down last, no, last week. Yeah, the very beginning of last week. So yeah. good to be finally talking to you. Um, so many topics to discuss today. Um, I think we, we keep we keep crossing paths on lots of different threads on LinkedIn, on YouTube. I always see your comments there. Always very insightful, and there's always they're always fantastic little nuggets. So I'm keen to have you know an hour or maybe more with you just to, to get it all out of you and sort of go back and forth on a, on a couple of topics. So yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, no, I'm really looking forward to it. Thanks. Just just for the benefit of the audience, um, maybe it's good to start with an introduction of you know who you are, how long you've been using Tableau, and yeah, just 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 how you got sort of passionate about Tableau. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah. So. Well, first, I guess I've been in the BI space for a really long time, which is why I see a lot of things come back. Um, yeah, I had uh, I moved from I grew up in a relatively small place and moved to um, Ottawa, Ontario, in Canada to run a startup in '99. Um, yeah. and that startup didn't work, but right. it was interesting. It was when the internet was really, you know, burgeoning and you know the dot com bubble and everything and. Um, somehow, uh, um, Cognos, who would have been along with Business Objects, one of the two big early yeah. BI vendors, um, somehow I convinced them, I got hold of their senior vice president of products and convinced, without any background in it, convinced them that they should hire me for, um, what did they call the job at the time? It was a product manager for, for, for performance, sizing, and scalability because they were going right. to the web, right? Like, so they were right. doing servers and everything in the client. So. With Tableau moving everything to the web client, I'm like, well, we did that at Cognos 22 years ago or something. You know, it's not new. <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, right, it was, exactly. It was really new then because browsers were pretty crap compared to today yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I ended up working at Cognos for 10 years. Um, right. And then I went to a... Oh, and a funny story. So the first time I saw Tableau, I was a product manager in the first five or six. And right. then at the end, I ran... 
global sales enablement for us after we got bought by IBM. Um, right, yeah. Including having the competitive team. And I remember okay. someone who worked on PowerPlay, which, so I was on a product called Metric Studio, which I think still exists, believe it or not. Um, okay. And then one of the product managers from PowerPlay um, ended up running the competitive team on my team. And she said to me, this is about 2008, maybe. She goes, I have something um, that you have to see that you're not going to want to see. And she shows me Tableau Desktop. And right. at the time, it was probably Tableau 2 or something. I don't even know. Like right. We could do the right. math on that. Three. Yeah, um, yeah. And it's a little thing that I think some people still don't get today, that the people who get it, who get it, is I think she dragged over some measure in a time dimension, and it automatically made a line chart. <laughs> and I go, why can't we do that? Like, I know it seems little, right. but like a lot of right. people, uh, it, especially if you're going after true business users, can't yeah. like don't get that, like, they don't know that that should be a line. <laughs> yeah. you know I mean, every yeah. other product to this day, it's like, bring your data in. How do you want to visualize it? I'm yeah. like, why doesn't yeah. the product tell me how to visualize it? Anyway. Correct. Um, yeah. So then uh, I went to a supply chain analytics company called Connexus, where I ran product, where I ran out of marketing and product management for a couple of years, did another startup. Anyway, that startup didn't work. I went, that's enough to rise a startup. And yeah. uh, I thought, I'm going to go back and be an individual contributor. I've had enough of this climbing the corporate ladder, trying to run company stuff. And, um, and Tableau had an SE role. And I right. knew a lot of the people from Tableau Canada uh, from the Cognos days. And I, went, right. um, uh, and I went, and they're like, the only thing is, do you really want to go back and be a sales engineer? I'm like, I right. actually really want to go back and be a sales engineer. Like, I just want something <laughs> non-stress, right? Um, yeah. And then, so I remember going through the interview process. So this will get us onto the data part too, right away. And yeah. I looked at super strong. I'm like, no one's data looks like, that's great. Yeah. Like data <laughs> doesn't look like that. Right. So yeah, yeah. I remember, and they made me do a demo. I go, I'll only do a demo if I can not use super strong. And they okay. went sure. And I went uh, right. inside Airbnb, which I still use today for demos all the time. Yeah. And went, I went, well, what if I was a city what if I worked for the city of Toronto? How would I use this data? If I was a host, how would I use this data? How would I? And that was my demo. And I went, right. and that made me think, oh man, I love this product even more than I thought, but it's even harder to model data. <laughs> yes, than yeah, I thought. No, definitely. So, so anyway, I worked, at, I worked at Tableau from 99 to, uh, sorry, uh, 2017 to 2021. And mm -hmm. then I left because my wife had actually started, she's a three-time Tableau ambassador at this point. She'd started awesome. a consulting company and I went, oh, that's the next stage, let's do that. So yeah. um, we have a very small Tableau consultancy called Paint With Data and we yeah. just help clients get better at Tableau basically. Good. And, uh, and yeah, so then just super quick, I guess to get in the book, how the book came about was yeah. what I think, what we help people with I think more than anything is they've already been using Tableau. The it doesn't look that good. It's not communicating yeah. well, so there's that side. Right. But the other yeah. side, it performs like garbage usually. And like, so we help them work quicker. And get we have better. a philosophy that everyone should be able to get from the highest level of aggregation down to offending record in 10 seconds and three clicks or less. So okay. we can't always do it, but that's an obsession, right? So I'm like, right. so you can't do that if your data is not modeled really well. And then Correct. the publisher hit me up and I'm like, I don't really want to write a book and but I did a search and there's no yeah. books on the top so like Carl's got a book on Tableau uh, prep and there's a million on yeah. Tableau but there's yeah. none really on data modeling, data modeling. And, yeah. and I'm like, sure I'll I'll take this on and then yeah. that made me realize I thought I was good at data modeling in Tableau and obviously I got way better because it forces you to get way better at it and then yeah, it does yeah yeah since then I seem to talk about it a lot. <laughs> amazing, think. amazing. Yeah. That, that's such a rich and colorful, like, uh, heritage with Tableau. And it's it's also, you're quite fortunate because, yeah, you, you've, you've come from uh, a different era in analytics, very much so. You've, you've probably seen uh, the end of one with Cognos, the start of another with Tableau. And I think mm -hmm. we're now full circle again. We, it's kind of the third next era just forming. And we'll get onto this later. And yeah, you, you, you kind of alluded to it before we started, which is you're starting to see things come back around, <laughs> like, you know, right. and, and, and trends come back into, into, into fruition. And so I think one of the interesting things I've always asked other, you know, people with Tableau specifically, you know, in that sort of time frame, I've already, I've already, like I've been using Tableau for just just under a decade, as it were. So I've only okay. really seen one phase of this. Um, 
How have you kept your your passion in analytics? How have you kept your passion in in data going? Is it actually the fact that you found new things to discover and do, and that sort of constant pursuit to make things better has sort of pushed you that way, or is there there's some secret sauce that maybe you oh, can synthesize for the audience? <laughs> that's a great question. I think uh, I think my Venn diagram is uh, is an obsession around two things. Um, right. The first is um, People making decisions completely based on their opinion and not fact has always driven me right. crazy from the time I okay. was very young. <laughs> like I, I, uh, yeah, I could tell so many stories on that, but everything I want, but you know, I won't, it's not that I won't make a, a decision without data, but if I make it without data, I'm like, I'm going to collect data as I do this. Cause I, yeah. because, um, I absolutely love the whole field of behavioral economics, behavioral psychology, and I just know yeah. how garbage we are as humans at doing that. Do you know what I mean? So I like, yeah, have to check definitely. myself and use data. Yeah. So I'm very passionate about using data to um, to, bat to make the right, keep you on course, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I could go on about strokes game and golf for hours, right? <laughs> uh, and then, um, and then on the other side, I'm obsessed about. Um, uh, uh, that using technology for productivity to make things quicker and easier, right? So right. as an example, one time I was trying to espouse why Tableau is better than Power BI, which isn't the easiest thing to explain, but yes. I'm explaining it to this customer who's a Power BI customer. And uh, he said, well, other than it being fast and easier, how, you know, how's it better? And I said, why would you adopt any technology? for any purpose other than for it to be faster and easy. Like that's easier. what technology is for. Slower and harder. Why would you do that? Well, like every literal thing. <laughs> like you would drive a bicycle instead of a car if it didn't get you there fast. Right. Do you know what I mean? Like we would right. have tons of problems, yeah. right? Like yeah, faster yeah. and easier is the reason. So in Tableau, it just is the intersection of those two things, right? So right. Um, I know other people don't like have or, sorry, people struggle with Tableau, I think, because, you know, this, and you and I got into this on LinkedIn, but it starts yeah. with the aggregate and you're down, and they yes, don't trust the yes. number. But I'm like, yes. but if I have to start with all the details and aggregate up, you've already slowed me down. I'd rather start at the right. top and drill into yes. what I need to So, and, yes. and Tableau's done a great job. Yeah, I guess we could talk about whether we think this is ending or not, but they've done a great <laughs> job of innovating for at least the past seven years. I've been using it pretty deeply. Like we all yeah. have our gripes about yeah. laying out a dash like that. I can't snap to a grid in the line, like all the things for dashboard, but they've still done so yeah. many big innovative things that they've kept up like in, yeah. in, in other products don't typically. So Correct. And, you know, um, we, I'm sure, you know, Jock McKinley's, um, you know, uh, innovation chart, right. That should have shows. And he, I think he still updates it. It's on Tableau public. I'll, I'll put it up on screen. You know, it shows all the innovation happening in Tableau, um, over the years. And what is, what is pretty incredible about that diagram is if you can, you can literally plot in a linear, on a linear level, like just with each release, mm -hmm. how frequently big momentous changes come about to the platform. You know, um, there are some features which are sort of incremental to the platform. They add a bit of quality of life. They add a bit of, um, you know, finesse. But then there are some changes which are, oh, okay, actually, we've noticed a trend that's hard for our customers. We're going to invest a lot of time into enabling this whole swathe of capabilities. And to me, data modeling was that sort of, you know, thing, mm -hmm. relationships as a specific thing. Tableau prep was kind of the precipice of that, right? But it was solving it in a different space. It was solving it in a, in a sort of, let's say, um, pre-analysis pre pre sort of those, do this, then right. do that, right? And then data modeling came about and it actually opened up the possibility to do this while doing that. So it allowed you to kind of do that stuff at the same time as you're asking questions. And we'll come on to this in a bit more detail. Yeah. But I think that's that's just been such a huge shift. And I think part of the reason I wanted to talk to you today was because I think that shift was kind of missed by a lot of people, right? I think yes. I think a lot of people haven't taken the opportunity to really evaluate what that means for their work. Right. Um, and I think a big reason it's missed um, it's because so many of these community projects, right? And right. the things people talk about in the community use very small data. So when they true, join true. it and explode yeah. it, it's still not yeah. that big. And I look it's not going to sign anything down. Yeah. So as a consultant, the biggest thing I feel like I talk to 
I have to unlearn, like if people unlearn stuff, they learn from the community that I go, what they taught you was completely fine when you've got 10,000 rows of data, but it's not right. going to work on your data set. And, <laughs> and therefore some of those people don't, I think ever learn it, like the leaders in the community, because they're not working with it's true. these massive yeah. data sets. Um, yeah. I'll give you a really good example is I take, uh, I show people this to show simple relationship kind of in the impact of answer all the questions without and not explode your data, right? I go yeah, join, yeah. explode your data and not your questions, right? Yes. So I take three simple ones from inside Airbnb where I can go, I'm going to take listings, yeah. I'm, I'm going to take bookings, uh, and I'm going to take, uh, sorry, uh, listings, reviews, because you don't have bookings because they're scraping, they don't know bookings, right? Sure. Listings, reviews, yeah. and reviews are a proxy for bookings, and comments. And yeah. I can take, picture how what that would explode out. Do you know what I mean? For a city, say the size yeah. of Toronto or London or whatever. I go, but because it's a relationship, I can go, all the listings, have you drilled down on my whole 10 second, three click thing, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I can show you the calendar the next 365 days for the place you pick. So you have to drill into it first, true, right? True, and, then, true, yeah. and I can show you not only the reviews, but I can show you the comments of the reviews and the yes. things performs like snap, Crisp. right? But yeah. people yeah. are trying, but people try to join, we get this all the time. We have a few customers with call center stuff and they try to join the call center. Everything comments. together. I join it yeah. in. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. They're like, why does it take yeah. 45 seconds? I'm like, I, yeah. it's impressive you can get in 45 seconds. You know, yeah, if you had a relationship, <laughs> it would come instantly. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, the most, the simplest example I always give about that is like support, support ticket data. You know, someone wants to know mm -hmm. how many tickets were active on any given day historically, right? So you've got like a trending number of right. open tickets at a specific moment in time. And the hard thing about that question, you don't know it's hard until you try it, is that you have to have a f starting point, right? If you're going to do it the old way. And then you have to preserve that starting point all the way through time to get the running total at any given time, like absolute nightmare. And then I did it for the first time with relationships. And it, you know, it, it wasn't something I even thought to do. I just thought, what if you did this instead? And I tried it and it worked. And I was like, oh, wow, this is, this is incredible. Right? And, and that was the first time I realized, okay, I've been doing this wrong with the data model entirely. Like this is what it really meant for. Yeah. That, yeah. What I ran into recently, and there's a lot of these is because people come up with these questions, right? So they wanted yeah, to correct. know, um, yeah, it's effectively a call. Like when a call opened, they wanted yeah. to know in any given week, how many calls open this week? How many calls closed this week? They were open yeah. this week. How many called, how many were open this week? Um, Close this week that started in another week. And then yeah. how many pass through? Do you know what I mean? Like we're already <laughs> open and pass through. And they're like, yeah. how do I even do this? I'm like, hmm, we'll scaffold this to a new date. We'll go to that date. The thing responds instantly and it took me, I don't know, an hour to come up yeah. with that logic for them. Yeah. It's like, I'm like, yeah. I wouldn't even know how to create a yeah. join to do, like that yeah. logic's crazy. Because you have to evaluate it every week to get. And I go, the great Correct. thing about this one is if you want to drill that up to a month, all the logic's going. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, go down yeah. to a day. It wouldn't make sense to a day. They didn't have enough volume, but it would work, right? Like, but it's a painful thing, and you know, even if you sort of live up to the what I would call the traditional data stack, and you have a data engineering team, and you ask them to instantiate something that solves this. The thing they'd come back with wouldn't give you the flexibility that Tableau gives you, right. and this is sort of what I call last mile analytics, which is. It's fine to push this logic sometimes back into the data warehouse, absolutely sort of live with that philosophy. But there does come a point where you lose agility in the speed and the ability to answer the question. And I think there is, there is sometimes a space to keep that stuff flexible in Tableau. Yes, push back the metadata, absolutely. But I, 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 I still, I, know, I, I work in a consultancy with lots of data engineers and I think their philosophy is move everything back into the warehouse right. so everything can see it. But when you're doing analysis, and this is hard because, you know, we'll come onto this as well. Sometimes the person building it isn't the person using it. And right. I often feel like, you know, you as a consultant, me as a consultant, we we dog food our own products, <laughs> you know, right. right, right, and so we have that perspective. Whereas sometimes in an organization with reporting teams and business users, the reporting builders are a bit disconnected from the frustration of trying to answer that question. 
mm -hmm. the person can articulate what it should do, but can't articulate how to do it. And then the reporting person knows how to do it, but they don't understand why they want it done, right? And those two never meet in a, in a sort of a logical way. It's so hard to bring those two worlds together. Right. Yeah, no, I, I think it, it sets people back a lot of the time, but when we start a new consulting engagement, the, almost always the first question I ask is, can you walk me through the application, which is your people are inputting stuff to generate this data? And they're like, why would I do that? I go, because I don't know what I'm looking at. Yeah. Like it's just numbers. <laughs> like I want to know. Like, is it validated first? Yeah. Is it? Do yeah. you want like? Unless it's like no one's ever thought to ask that question before. I'm like, yeah. I don't know how they can help you with your data then? Because correct. Do they know I, the answer to that? Do that's so so curious. Do people sometimes know, they actually sometimes they do, but it often makes them run that person down, which then gets them into a conversation that they should have been having. <laughs> right. Right. Me, right. Right. Um, exactly. Yeah. Like you'll see sometimes Bethany Lyons, and I'll get into this on oh, LinkedIn. Yeah. Right. I'm like. Yeah. My thing always is like, oh, the hardest thing for a data engineer to do to me is that if you think about like software in the traditional sense, they have three tiers, right? They have a UI and they have yeah. um, almost always they have a layer that's got logic and then they have the data, right? Yeah. And, and then people extract the data from those applications and they hand it to a data engineer and then some kind of analyst and go, give me answers out of that data. And I'm like, but all the rules are gone. They were in the mid tier. They were never in the data yeah. in the first place. Like I'm it's like, true. if you don't know how to recreate those roles in the data, it, it's not a data cataloging problem. It's a, yeah, yeah. how did that data get generated problem? And I yeah. think in consultancy, sometimes I think it frustrates people. Cause I'm like, even with great data modeling tools, I go, I'm going to annoy you how long we're going to spend in getting your data model. Right. But then yeah. You'll get answers so quick, and you won't even be able to wrap your head around how quick it yeah. is. Because like once, like once it's clear what we're pulling, like you know, in Tableau speed, when those pills were dragging on, and we know what they are and the relationship between them, it's just unbelievable. Yeah. That's where Tableau is so fast. Yeah. But if you don't know what you're pulling on, which I see people do all the time, it's and true. then they yeah. they pull it on until they go, that number looks like I think what the number is. I'm like, we can't do that. <laughs> yeah. You, you... Well, like, you do need to learn to like, what's the word? Not test it, but like, you kind of need to have a lived experience of how that metric comes to life, right? right. And right. you have to actually ask someone, sometimes not even the person who's asking for the report. Sometimes it actually, you have to go back the sort of few layers down to the person who actually lives that world and they'll tell you the nuance of that metric. And then oh. you can kind of pull that through. Yeah. 100%. And we, and we have a logistics fight now to to your point about last mile, how you can solve lots of things in the last mile. Yeah. Um, they said, we can't just use um, transit number or whatever it was, right, to do it because some of them get billed to the customer and some don't. And then they quickly go, right. well, we can go back to our data engineering team and we can work them out. I'm like, but how would you know looking at the application? And they're like, yeah. well, the ones that we, because they, tr they use the transit number to move from one of their own warehouses to another, right? Yeah. I'm like, it wouldn't have a PL on it. I'm like, great, we'll just filter PL in Tableau. Like, you don't have to go back to your data. We'll just, yeah. just filter the ones out with an all PO, like in their yeah, yeah. Answer, right? Like, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Well, yeah I, just, uh, yeah. I just saved you just, like $5,000 engineer, data engineering <laughs> or whatever in a month. Do you know what I mean? Or yeah, backlog, exactly. Right? Like some of these, exactly. you don't need to engineer. Or even build in the ability to set that context, depending on the question that's being answered. So, 100%. You know, that's do, what do, I said. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. the great thing about this then is if you want to know what percentage of times you're just sending things between warehouses not to customers now that's not gone yeah. no. do you know yeah. what i mean you can answer that exactly question, exactly yeah. exactly so yeah like drilling into this data modeling skill how did you um obviously you talked about consulting you've seen you've seen a lot of your customers have have challenges in this space um maybe let's dive deeper into sort of what what drove you to write the book and like what problem were you trying to solve the book if 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 someone had read through your book and come out the end of your book you know, having really sort of engaged it, what would what would be sort of your desirable effect to that person? So if I if I read your book end to end, what mm -hmm. would what what would you hope for me if that makes sense? Yeah, that's a great. No one's ever asked it that way. Um, I think uh, I think two things depending on the role, right? Um, uh, but at a minimum, the first thing I would get them to expect is, oh, if I put more time into this, yeah, like the end experience in Tableau for both authors and um, viewers is going to be so much better, right? right. Um, yeah. So if they're a dashboard developer, they'd still get, I can do that. But what I hope organizations would get out of the book uh, is 
you know what, we shouldn't have everyone with a creator license creating data sources. We should have a relatively small number of people creating data sources that are really good at it, that are creating high yeah. performance ones as published data sources, and then yeah. have people have done to that, right? Or if they have data management, even virtual connections, which I didn't get. Yeah. They were pretty new, right? So I didn't get that deep yeah. in. But I'm like, again, for that fast and easy, the quickest way to be fast and easy is but a few people build really good data models and share them. Right? Like, yeah, it's exactly. just because then Tableau just becomes so much easier. Do you know what I mean? If you correct, do that, so that would be yeah. And uh, that's that's a really powerful um, point. And I just want to put a pin on data management. I'll come to that in a second. Yeah, there's a bit of that that drives me nuts uh, to do with pricing and how it splits. I'll, I'll the <laughs> It's just like, God, like, yeah, absolutely. We'll come back to that. But like, I, I don't want to sort of distract from the, the conversation about your book. Yeah. So I kind of, I started at the end with your book by asking like, what what would someone get out of your book? And you, you've given a really sort of clear, cohesive answer. And to anyone who's watching or listening, uh, you know, I, I couldn't recommend your book more. I think it's such a, it will take you out of your day to day sort of, um, you know, when you're working in analytics, sometimes you find yourself just repeating the same habits, right? Even even though you've done something, you've done a use case before, you know how to do it. You just you just do what you've been doing all along. And I think the great thing about your book and the way it structures it forces you to to, to, to at a high level think how you approach things in a new way. And I think your content, more generally, even your Tableau conference um, session most recently, I think was a really powerful demonstration of how that can have a huge impact on on the work you do. And, you know, I, I couldn't recommend it more. So what I wanted to do is now go into the book a little bit more and just, just give okay. you an opportunity to talk about the book and, uh, you know, what's your favorite chapter? Like, uh, you know, if you were to tell someone just to read one part of the book, what, what would it be? Um, the problem with this is, is it, <laughs> I should have the book in front of me. I, if the last chapter, I think it's 15. Um, we can but, grab it. We can. <laughs> yeah. My favorite chapter um, was the last chapter because I always right. think it's best to walk people through use cases of you right. know when I would embed a data source, when I wouldn't um, embed a data source, uh, you know, all that kind of thing based on um, yeah. the specifics of, whoops, of, uh, uh, of the use cases, because I think that's always the most important thing, which was kind of what the, hopefully the presentation was at TC, that kind of yeah, deal. Yeah. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. The problem with it is, unless you know Tableau, you can't talk to that chapter, because <laughs> you need to know <laughs> all the things before. Like, um, yeah. like, um, like, like on the, the similar, it will go back to the book, but I think it's similar. Like today, yeah. I just had um, a blog on uh, Kevin and, Ken's um, yes, yes. blog on, on included. Kevin and Ken. And, yeah. Yeah. And mostly it's on, um, mo it's on include and exclude, but mostly it's on how not to use them except for one right. include. But, um, but they're a perfect way to understand, um, Tableau's order of operations. So what it's really yes. about is what it means, the order of operations of what being in the view means. Right? Correct. But, Correct. um, but those are kind of boring conceptual topics, but this, if you work back from it, you'll get the, you know, yeah. I mean, if you work back from yeah. why in include and exclude yeah. don't work the way that almost anyone thinks they work, right? Yes. And you work yes. back, you're like, oh, but now I understand the order of operations. Otherwise, it's just, I can follow this chart, but I don't really get it. Yes. Right. So, yes. yeah. Um, yeah. so the, the, the last chapter of the book is definitely my favorite chapter of the book, but it's kind of things like, people have to take the time to understand how relationships work, I think is yeah. a good example, right? And then mm -hmm. um, before you do publish data sources, you have to know how they work, how they're secured, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And if, if I'd done the book today, I would definitely have a chapter on Pulse because Pulse is easy, <laughs> except yes. you have to understand published data sources, how they're secured, uh, how robust security works, or Pulse Correct. is not good. And if you have that set yeah. up, you yeah. can, I know Tableau goes, you can create a pulse metric in five minutes. I'm like, you can create one in 30 seconds if your model's it's good. If your model's not yeah. good, forget yeah. it, right? Yes, like, correct. Uh, like I would it's almost, all in the model, actually, for Tableau Pulse. Yeah, yeah I would yeah. almost yeah. never have a model without row-level security, which wouldn't, which is not about row-level security per se, but it's yes. because then I only have to create one metric, and depending correct. on who looks at it, it gets the metric they do without me having Everything's to create a bunch of metrics right. for people, yeah. right? It's not yeah. even about the yeah. security, it's about... Um, yeah. So I guess back to the book, <laughs> the last chapter, but, <laughs> but I think there's a lot 
and I tried to write the shortest book I could write. Now, there's a lot of screenshots in it, but and it still came up to 325 pages. My prediction yeah. for the publisher was, oh, we get this in 200 pages for sure. <laughs> but but it's, um, yeah, there's a lot of moving parts is the problem. <laughs> yeah. Like there's, uh, yeah, yeah. I think I think I think um, I've I've had a really difficult experience with publishing. We're going off track here, but yeah. I've been approached by publishers before, and obviously I'm a video person, right? So yeah. th there's there's a there's there's just something in my head around. I think I could make a three hour video better than I can make a chapter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They're they're roughly the same length in terms of right. time to consume and assimilate, but I think. I can structure a video better. I don't know what it is about that. And, you know, I've had publishers, oh, why don't you just take that video and, you know, synthesize it into a book? And I'm like, because I think I'd struggle with that. It's, it's just something that I've really, really struggled. So when you first, you know, wrote, wrote a book, did you have any sort of reservations like that where, you know, maybe, maybe you're more familiar with blogging and someone's asking you to write a book or if the format was intimidating anyway, and, and did, did you overcome that? Or actually was it a much easier process than you, you maybe thought for, for anyone else who's sort of thinking oh, no, about it's a, an author? <laughs> Selfish it, it, question as well. <laughs> it's a great question. It was, um, no, it was definitely harder than I thought, which right. most things of that magnitude are. Um, yeah. Uh, I think, and, um, I mean, it doesn't sound like a John Grissom or anything. <laughs> so, uh, uh, or pick whoever, right. Um, uh, I think with the book, the, oh, the, almost the only really good thing about a book, I think is it's such a great reference when people have to go back later to reference things, Correct. but it's, um, that's, what's hard to get at a video, I think. And, yes. um, but it's hard to get someone to read your book and it's hard to read a book anymore. Cause I think we're not only say, are you a video guy? I think we're way more video consumers, right? Um, Generally. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm very auditory when it comes to things like if I were to listen to something, I don't know, like the state of politics in this country or something, that'd be a podcast yeah. for me. Like I wouldn't yes. have to see them doing it. I'd be doing yard yes. work or something at the same yes. time. And cause it's easy yes. to process those two things at once. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'm not sure I would, it'd be hard for me to recommend people to write a book other than it's a really cool thing to have done. I, yes, I, it's my, achievement, someone, definitely. Yeah, my favorite TED Talk, and there's been a lot of good ones, but my favorite one is Tim Urban's on procrastination. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen it. <laughs> and I have not. He, oh, it's great because he talks about, I'm paraphrasing, so I'll be slightly wrong, but he goes, I knew six months ahead I was giving it. And it's on procrastination, remember? And he goes, I'm going to get it done now. And then three months out, he hasn't started. And then a month out, he still hasn't started. <laughs> but then his line, which I love, I'm writing a book exactly like this, is he goes, it was at that point I realized I didn't want to give a TED Talk. I wanted to be someone who gave a TED Talk in the past. <laughs> and that's kind of what the experience is like. <laughs> right, right. Makes I think a lot sense. of life is like that. I wanted to have done yeah. it. Like, I wanted to have done it, but I don't want to. Yes. Yes. It's not exactly put the work in. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I don't mind working it's hard. It's yeah. like it is a labor because what the great advantage of video over a book is that you can add all the color to it that you can. And yes. right, the book's driving me crazy because I'm trying to be concise as I possibly can. And I want to say more. And I'm like, people aren't going to read. It's already 325 pages, right? It's true. Um, but I'm like, but that's why they're such good references, though. It's so yeah. hard to, So I'm Very glad precise. I've written it for a reference. Do you know what I mean? That'll yeah. sit there yeah. for a reference for a while. Um, yeah. And I think, I think there is, I always, I'm actually quite envious of people who have written books because there's so many make videos. One of the things um, you, you, you have to do when you're making videos, you have to get into a rhythm. Um, with necessarily mm -hmm. YouTube or whatever. The algorithm likes it. It's a bit like a TV show, essentially. If a game show happens every week at a set time, guess what? You tend to stick with it and you watch it for a couple of weeks. Whereas if it happens at irregular times, you kind of fall out of love with it because it never, it never syncs with your schedule. Same is right. true with video. And mm -hmm. the thing I think authors and people who've written books have is that, is that, is that roadmap, right? You can take your content and seeing as you own the book, you've got the freedom to be able to say, right, I'm actually going to make this more accessible in a specific structure. And so I think I mentioned this to you, like, you know, like um, in, in messaging, I was thinking the pairing of writing a book and pairing that with video, I think is a, it's a super powerful yeah. mechanism 
because for the people who aren't into reading books, it brings them into the topic, I think, just enough to pique their interest in the reference. And for mm -hmm. people who are interested in the reference, it allows them to have something to share to be able to demonstrate the thing that they have. So there's a social element to it, which books, books I think, struggle with that social element because once you read something, you like it. How do you how do you, how do you share it? Like you can't always take a screenshot of the book that you know that infringes copyright in some right. respects. But and and there's no digital thing if unless you're reading on an e-reader or you're going to paraphrase the book or quote. But you know people do lots of different things. But it's hard to capture like a chapter, the sentiment of a chapter, and mm -hmm. share it with someone. Uh, and so that's that's where I think you know books and videos or content and videos can, can really help because the videos can get that reach. They can yeah. get that broad brush appeal, bring people in. And if they're passionate, you kind of you, you kind of bring them in. So that that's sort of um, I, it's not something I'm going to explore. I, I still do not have time to write a book. But, <laughs> but, yeah, <laughs> but I, I, I'm sur I'm surprised, not surprised, because no one else, like in the history of the world, almost no company has gone from one model to another. But I'm surprised correct. a good publisher yes. hasn't like set up hasn't a tried pretty that. good platform for that. Do you know what I mean? Because it's correct. It's worth giving up. Um, I would say it's worth giving up a lot of whatever you're going to make on something for someone yeah. who's like not only got the channel for like, you know, the reach yeah. channel, I mean, but also yeah. has yeah. like a formula. So you don't have to write the formula. Correct. Do you know what Correct. I mean? Like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't want to, I mean, since the company doesn't exist anymore, I'll give you an example of a Cognos that of some yeah. of exact team that drove me crazy is that they brought in a, a consultant to help come up with a development process, right? Like a better right. kind of, you know, before Agile was big, or not like that hasn't been ruined <laughs> either. But, uh, and I'm like, but is our core competency like developing, um, like, is our core competency developing a development process? Because Microsoft had something called My Microsoft Solution Framework, which told other software companies how to develop software. I'm like, why don't we yeah. just adopt something like that? Yeah. And they're like, yeah. no, I'm like, it's not our core competency. It doesn't make sense. So the parallel <laughs> to this is, I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to figure out, like what you just said made total sense to me. I love this idea of reference video, reference video, and go yeah. back. Like, why doesn't someone have that platform? Or if they yeah. do, and someone's yeah. put it in their yeah. conference. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, exactly. They can have, do you know what I mean? Just to, yeah, exactly. exactly. I, don't want, I don't want to learn how to build that thing. Do you know what I mean? I just want to deliver the content. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. you know, the, the closest I got to a book was with one publisher, and like my my line the line i wouldn't cross is i wanted to make a bit about something i was passionate about mm -hmm. and i wanted to make it in a way that felt authentic to me because i felt like if i just put out a book and i already have a, a presence and people know my style they know my communication mm -hmm. like it, it would be a bit off right oh to yeah. just put out a book because he can kind of thing rather than right. oh this is him taking you know what what he knows and putting it in, in into another format um, and the, the route I, I sort of ended up sort of thinking, maybe this is something to do for the future is like going down the route of self-publishing, not, not to discredit the, um, the, mm -hmm. the, the force that, and, you know, rigor that publishers have, they have, they, they have it down to a T, right? They have editors, they have, um, people who can print the book, they have distribution, they have like, they have it all down. And to, to take that on in self-publishing is, is really really challenging but if you're not so precious about the reach of the book and you know you know where it goes i think you can you can sacrifice a little bit of that to just put that idea into a, into that format and let mm -hmm. let the world do with that format what it can so i thought about self-publishing something only to essentially produce a pdf that n not even to print the published book right a book right. can be whatever you call it right so yeah. i just thought mm, what if i just go down the street but all we do is we make a pdf and we just put it out into the community and let people do what we want with it and it was around the sketch notes idea and you know, explaining tableau and yeah. data to people yeah. it's a format in the video that i think works well and i think it could easily translate to a book in lots of different interesting ways mm -hmm. And so I've parked that idea for now, but it's that, that sort of, if I come back to that, that's exactly sort of where I'd go back to. And it would be just to, to, to do a little bit of it and let someone else do the rest. You know, what's brilliant is Amazon does this really well. I'm True. They do. Yeah. Self publishing. But I don't yes, think yes. the stuff we're talking about lends itself to eBooks. Correct. 
correct, right? like, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's such a weird niche in itself. And um, I, I'm a sucker for print publishing as well because I used to work in magazine design. So, you know, obviously I'm sat here not just making videos, but I've, I want to open InDesign and lay it up myself and do all the stuff that I used to do back then with it. And that that, that would then become a distraction because, again, like – one of the things you have to learn is to delegate, right? If you were going to write a book, write yes. a book, let someone else do everything mm -hmm. else. <laughs> well, and yeah. editing your own stuff's very hard. Like, I guess... Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. I you used to blog it. a lot when blogging was a thing. And the one thing that helped me with all this a lot is, I can't remember, like some famous author had a course or something. The best thing ever was write, don't try to write and edit at the same time. Like, there's something True. you have to learn. Like, just write it, then go back and Correct. edit it. And yes. I remember... Yes. I remember reading Brandon Sanderson. Um, it was now like a massive author, right? Like Brandon ran a Kickstarter last year, the year before that raised 25 or $27 million or something. Talk about self-publishing. But anyway, as a famous author, even he said before he gives his book to his publisher, he edits it himself six full time. <laughs> like, <laughs> can you imagine any wow, writes thousand page books? Do you know what I mean? And then he does crazy. six. And he goes, cause I've got to cut this. Like, I know it's garbage, but not when I'm writing yeah. it. Only when I, reflect on it when you when you so. reflect you come back to it yeah, it's true yeah yeah um i can relate to that a bit i have made i don't know how many times i've made a video and just decided not to put it up i, I did this just last week actually i made a video what was it about a oh, car god what was it about oh, i it was around it's about um tableau job market so i've made this video three oh, times okay. now it's 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 i've never released it um and basically i was trying to explain to people that when looking for tableau jobs um, don't believe the hype and, you know, euphoria around, oh, there are no Tableau jobs or their Tableau skills are going down right. or Tableau jobs aren't valued. I was basically trying to dissect that question into sort of different pillars and say, look, you know, it's fine. What you actually want to do is get rid of the term Tableau from your skill set and just understand what skills you have. Go right. look for those jobs and you'll find a lot of Tableau jobs, funnily enough. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right? Like they, they, they just don't put that tableau in front of it they put power bi and then they just you read the details and it's like we use tableau right. but they right. want you to have both skills anyway um mm -hmm. I, I do that so i totally i sort of sort of resonate and connect with that um but yeah no i'll, I'll have to reflect on sort of my authoring um one my big project at the moment is rebuilding my website so i'm i'm um, maybe I'll ask your opinion on this. So one of the things okay. it's it's a bit a bit of a bit of a bit. I'm, I'm not sure if it's controversial or not, but I make a ton of videos. Uh, I have been successfully able to transcribe these very well. So I use something called OpenAI um, uh, Whisper, and it can translate okay. my videos with 99% accuracy to the point where I'm only correcting maybe four or five words in like a in like a what five minute segment. It's, it's gone very, very good. If you Incredible. use the large models, it's success, exceptional. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a transcript of an entire video. And then what I've played with is taking that transcript, putting it into something like ChatGPT and asking it to reformat it in the okay. tone of a blog. Yeah. And so the ethical bit of this is what what would people think of that if that makes sense so here's a blog edited by me written by ai that's sort of been the tagline that i've been like playing around with in my head to give people who don't like the video format an alternative format for the video that i've just made huh. but it's been edited by me and so this is this is the thing i'm i'm trying to like understand on one level i think it's it's actually quite a good use of this ethically because i'm i'm only reposting my own content your ip yeah um yeah. But on the flip side, I can't be certain that's actually what the AI is doing because obviously the AI gets its knowledge and its 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 sort of way of putting these together from surprise, surprise, all the other blogs that it's scraped. <laughs> so, I, you know, you can give it your content as a direction, but I, you can't be certain that it's not getting that sort of way of putting things together and it would lack your tone and everything. So in editing it, I end up rewriting it a lot of it. And I've done this with two articles and I spent about 15 minutes editing each. And I thought, interesting. I, I didn't know sort of where to place that concept. So maybe so, I thought I'll ask your opinion on that because you've written blogs, you've written a book, but you've also watched my videos. So. <laughs> yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, um, I think it's brilliant. So here's the thing, I think. Um, we could use a ton of metaphors on this, right? Like yeah, uh, yeah. If, you, if, if you were a musician and you ripped somebody else's song on, Right. Yeah. That would be um, that would be uh, uh, obviously very unethical. But say yeah. 
we roll back to say 1978 and Van, I think 78, 76, Van Halen one drops. And yeah. um, Eddie Van Halen's using this topping technique and he's not the first guy to ever do it, but he uses right. a lot more than anyone else. I think if someone else, other people started um, using a lot of like finger tapping technique instead of picking technique. Yeah. Um, I don't think very many people say um, that's not fair. A lot of people go, True. that's a rip off. So I'm not going to listen to it because he's ripping them off, but it's not the same as, or sorry, it's not so yes. much a rip, but like, I could, why wouldn't I listen to Eddie if I could listen to it? Right. So True. The, True. the parallel here, I think is stealing the flavor. I don't think the flavor of the way people write blogs is their IP, I guess. Is Interesting. I'm I don't think it's taking IP. Like the very first chat time I came across the chat GPT was someone, it's funny, it's similar to this that said, clearly they were giving a speech. I don't know if they were actually giving the commencement speech, but um, right. on on uh, on the par the perils of helicopter parenting. And I thought this was yeah. brilliant because he goes, he says, write me a speech on the perils. So right away, the AI knows, well, this guy's not pro helicopter yeah. parenting. <laughs> right? uh, he goes, like a commencement speech in the voice of Martin Luther King. And I'm right. like, that seems okay. Like, it, as long as you tweak it, you know what I mean? But yeah. in this case, yeah, it's yeah. your input. So yeah, exactly. I think the IP is your IP. And the yes. fact that it, it, I think it's insanity not to do it. That would be like all these people who I make fun of who are like, have to write their own custom SQL because they don't trust Tableau to do it. Like, why would yes. we use True. Tableau to do True. it? True. Right. True, true. Anyway, that's yeah. a long-winded way of thinking. I, I think it's, I think it's uh, a brilliant idea, and it's uh, it's completely okay IP-wise from my standpoint. I think so. And, yeah. And whether it's brilliant or not, only the market will tell you. I think it's a brilliant <laughs> idea. It doesn't mean it's like you won't know until you put it out. Do you until know I put mean? it out. People exactly. People want to consume exactly. it or not. I have no yeah, idea. Yeah. Yeah. But the only that way takes I know time. how is to test it. <laughs> that's day time yeah yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, and this is it i've i've I've, I've i've written 10 um blog posts already and i just i've just haven't got around to put them up because i'm waiting for the website redesign so that i can more clearly i do want to be very clear that this is what's happening i you know i want to have the video above and then say okay everything below here has been done in this specific way have a separate blog post that talks about the technique have the transcript and have the blog post available so you know people can look at both and sort of um just just be transparent about it but i i want to see how that goes first and then i'll, I'll try with a few i maybe call it out on something like LinkedIn and see where it goes well, anyway, because yeah. the way the way i look at it right like um is that you're obviously a very intelligent guy and time's the one asset um uh, you know, the one currency that we can't get more of. We all do don't have, I mean? yeah. I'm, yeah. Like, I'm a big fan of the only good of money is to trade it off for time because time's the only yeah. thing that's completely non fun. So you going back through your own blog posts and typing the most insanity. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> thinking about, like, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I mean? exactly. Like, yeah. yeah. The, the transcripts themselves were in in itself like a revelation right being able to go back and transcribe all my videos like something like 500 videos historically transcribed and i'm slowly going through youtube sort of automating the process of uploading the transcript so if you've ever if you've ever watched a video of mine transcript is huge because it also enables other languages because google can then translate that right. transcript into another right. language automatically so and then i think um, google youtube is also working on audio dubbing on your behalf so it will take your voice another right. language and dub over what you're doing mm -hmm. and do the lip syncing so that it looks right. like you're saying the thing oh, really? on your yeah. behalf. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they're going to do that, you can. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty voice. wild. And, yeah. um, and that, that to me is like, there's, there's like levels to these things, but anyway, we, we get, we, we digress. Let's get back yeah, to yeah, Tableau. And, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, AI is part of the discussion, isn't it? We'll come yeah. to that in a second. So, yes. um, I think the one thing I want to touch on then is, um, I've touched on relationships, I've touched on data modeling. Um, you know, how would someone, one of the things I always explain to people, and this is maybe where that data modeling thing comes back is, I think Tableau has lots of layers and it's quite, a, it's quite hard to discover the full capability of what Tableau has to offer because I think the history of how they've brought the features together has been mm -hmm. essentially building on the past, right? So yep. data modeling itself has built on, relationships is built on data modeling, data modeling is built on the connections window and how you set things up. And so it all comes through time. And so the thing I was asked Tableau, how does someone, the example I give is how does someone know to look for an LOD? 
They have to do something in the product that gives you the cue that they're trying to achieve something. And I've always felt the tablet haven't taken that cue seriously enough to be able to then point the user to say, hey, you're playing with a filter and this table quite a lot. You keep trying to go back and forth between this thing. Maybe you need an LED. Can we show you what that is? And so I'm trying to understand what is what is the equivalent of that for relationships? How does someone know, okay, I'm having a real challenge here. I really need to look at relationships because that's the sort of, that's the thing the user doesn't know. So like how, if you don't know, how do you know that you need relationships? Like what could you, what could you tell people to say, look out for, to say, Hey, actually I need to investigate relationships. Um, that's a great question. I mean, my, my flippant answer is almost, it should be a, <laughs> it should be a relationship. Because <laughs> um, I'm still waiting on Always should be a relationship. Really, there's a couple of really fringe <laughs> ones, uh, but, uh, uh uh, it's a it's a great question. I do think they should, and it should work both ways. Because I more often True. than not, I see back to your first example. I see LODs that didn't need to be written. I'm like, right. that's in the view. Like that's yes. already in the yeah. view. You didn't need to yeah. write an LOD to do that, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, I I wish it would do things like. Um, uh, this is what I wish it would do. So imagine you've got a product table and you've got an order yeah. table. Let's make it really simple, right? Yeah. Um, and then I drag a product on, right? And I've joined those together, right? Yeah. Uh, and I bring a product on um, and then I bring sales on. I wish it would the first time prompt you to go, you know that you might have products without sales, but the way you joined your data together, you can't answer that question. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. That's a great um, one. Yeah, yeah. Because because that, that's the most obvious one to me is that like your joins are unless you're doing full order joins and creating a bazillion nulls um, and good luck on performance then right um, yeah then you're you're always making these conscious decisions to not let business users be able to answer questions which is which is kind of yes. crazy right so I wish yes. they would say right or even and I think. His I think Thomas and team, by the way, are pretty acutely aware of they wish they could do. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So, yes. Um, you talk about Thomas Nan, the uh, uh, product manager. Product yes. manager yeah. for, yeah. The, for yeah. this feature. And yeah. And if he didn't, he gets, which I'm sure <laughs> he'd love to hear, he, he gets 30 page documents from Jonathan Drummond making suggestions, for <laughs> Thomas, which is awesome. You know what I mean? Like, Jonathan really thinks about this stuff, right? Of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. In, in a good way. Um, and so, I, you know, almost. So wait, I don't know how much you've had a chance to play with Multifact yet, but it's a, little it's, a, it's a little dumb right now, but they know when it's going to get better in that. Not the model better, itself yeah. is very smart, but when you pull on, if you pull on something from a table that doesn't have a direct relationship between what you have on it, it'll warn you. Yeah, yes. But, but, um, but sometimes it can make it. So the warning's not that smart right now, so it'll get better. Right. But I wish they'd yeah. go the next step and go, um, to your point would be, you know, you drag something on, say, take my example from uh, TC, that simple one, right? Yeah. Maybe yeah. I go sales, um, sales, profit, discount, right? Boom, this puts, and like, and then it goes, I wish it would then go, mm, you know, this might be inventory, right? Yes. <laughs> like, it, yes. like yes. because they have the tech to do it, which is interesting in Tatlow Einstein, they showed this more front and center a little bit, but they've had the yeah. tech to do oat buyers um, yes. for a long time, but it's so buried in the product. Like the explain True. data is, was my favorite feature for a long time that no one could yeah. find. They, so that, that exists already. It's not even Gen AI, really. It's like- It's just it machine could, learning, yeah. <laughs> it, should bring the, it should bring those forward, right? And the other thing is, even, yeah. they call it predictive analytics, which it also isn't really. Um, Correct. It's, but it's outlier detection is what it is. And outlier detection's incredibly important because people spend around spend their day dragging pills around and filtering trying to find outliers yeah when they've exactly. got this technology that could just surface outliers for them yeah. so i wish they brought that tech together with so those are the things i'd like to see basically it'd be these ui yeah. gestures of right and and things like lod would fit into that you know what i mean Correct. like are you yeah. actually trying to aggregate this number yes like, yeah the, the the challenge they have is the biggest challenge they have is there's an implicit Tableau, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, 
philosophy is not the right word this close and it'll come to me edict maybe you know that's yes. us that like that you know what you're doing like the product's True. built on you know stupid. what you're doing so yeah. all this yeah. interrupt yeah. and it's like in the flow do you know what i mean like yeah. the tablet flow is a big thing yeah and now yeah. that would have to that's why they're very anti-wizard you know what i mean when they got acquired by salesforce yeah. It must have been yeah. jarring because it's the wizard yeah. company of the world. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then uh, yeah, yeah. the Tableau is like anti-wizard, right? So because yeah. <laughs> they don't want to interrupt the flow. So yeah. these things would all interrupt the flow. But I think I think um, they have to get over that. For the it's easy enough to yeah. have a dismiss. Do you know what? Like I got that. Do you know what I mean? Don't yeah. remind me anymore. But uh, yeah. but those would just be brilliant, and they could do it. I don't think it would be that hard. I don't want to be flipping to the UX people, but it wouldn't be that hard no, yeah. for them to get the trigger to know. Like Correct. how they interrupt someone takes a UX expert, but but the but the understanding to do it because um, the also people thing, yeah. people don't believe things. Like I spend a lot of time showing people what it's actually giving them in their model, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, mm -hmm. like uh, and this would help with my other thing, which is I have this dream that I wish people that were looking for Tableau people would say understands data really well, can't write a line of SQL to save their life. Because they're because <laughs> they're obviously not. like they want advanced SQL skills, but they never ask if they can understand data. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like like yeah. trust it to write the SQL. Do you know what I mean? But um, but you have to understand your data, right? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, they can make it a little easier to prompt you. Like for sure. And it's interesting. Tableau is always taking a view of I think you you nailed it there with like you're not stupid. You know your data. And sort of staying out of the way. And it's funny because one of the intrinsic parts of every authoring experience is, is something called show me. And I always feel like, like here we are with Gen AI and Einstein co-pilot. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I'm like, but you already had show me. Like all show me is missing is pairing how to do something with intent. So you always had a place that could have actually transcended a little side panel. It could have gone throughout the whole entire product. Show right. me how to use an LED. Show me how to yeah. build a chart. Show yeah. me how to connect to a data source. Show me how to build a data model. It's like right there, but it's stuck in the authoring experience. And that's the problem because the people who really need Show Me are the people who engage with the analytics, the people who need the outlier detection, the people who need to drill down and don't know how to and need to build their own analysis or people who need to get pulse, set up a new filter and then get that, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's a weird one, but obviously the Einstein brand is super strong and, you know, they have to go with Einstein, but to me, show me just sits there doing nothing yes. for years now. <laughs> and it's like, well, and, just, just pair them up. <laughs> and co-pilot. And Einstein co-pilots also, and it's not just them making what I think is this mistake too, which is, I think the biggest reason people can't use Tableau today um, is not the technologies because they don't know how to frame good questions. Like all you have good. to do is watch people yeah. use Google. Yeah. Like it's embarrassing, you know, but it is what it yeah. is, right? So yeah. Einstein co-pilot assumes that people can't drag and drop pills can but they can questions. answer good questions. I'm like, the yeah. good questions is the hard part, <laughs> not drag and drop and pill. So Einstein co-pilot should be sitting there going, maybe you should drag this to Rose, or maybe you should do this to create an LED. It should be like 180 degrees yes. from what it is. Yeah. And yeah. another thing you reminded me of is this. This goes back a long time. I remember it was one of the big banks in New York when I was working at Cognos. And every BI yeah. company has made this mistake. If he was right, this mistake ever since, which is, he goes, you're pricing pyramids upside down. He goes, you should be giving me developers for free because if they're good, then I'm going to have all these consumers who consume it. And I only want to pay you if people are getting value out of it. But Correct. you're making it hard for me to create stuff because that's the expensive stuff. Whereas if I knew people <laughs> were getting insights and doing that, like I'd pay a lot of money for that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. and I think as a result, all these features that consumers need or the business people who, you know, are technically inclined, they don't get because they're the low end of the price point. But, yes. but it, that's yeah. hardly Tableau's fault. Every single BI vendor. From yeah. The of time. Like in Cognos, yeah. we were way worse. I think we had nine or 11 different prices. Yeah. And like, yeah. you know, the person who created the data model would be like 2000 bucks and the report yeah. author would be 700 and like coming down. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It was like, and if bank people. Such a fragmentation. Yeah. yeah. I know and it's a also, tricky problem to solve, to be fair, but... Yeah, 
I think a legacy is is just that big thing. I'm I'm interested to see what companies like Sigma can do because, in many ways, they uh, they say themselves they follow in the steps of uh, giants, right? So, they 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 have the benefit of hindsight in certain respects to be able to see where the industry is going and also, um, what how they could reconfigure the way things work to sort of work better. Um, I I, I you, know, you know full disclosure, I think they still have a lot of work to do in some areas. Sigma claims to be a platform, but it's not as fully featured platform as Tableau. And some of the simple things like, you know, not being able to connect to a flat file, still huge hurdles to lots of companies who just need to be able to, you know, get this Excel to connect to that Google Sheet to connect to mm -hmm. that Snowflake table, right? That still a yeah. huge use case for so, so many companies. I, I haven't made up my mind on this yet, but the one thing I have to give, like, the Tableau founders, a lot of credit for, and they get a lot of credit for, is they built something. It was very Apple-like, and they built something that no one was asking for. And, True. And I know Henry Ford never actually said this, but I do wonder if Sigma are trying to build a faster horse. Like, they're giving right. people what they want as opposed to giving right. people what they need. Maybe. I, don't, I haven't made up my mind on that yet. But fine, I know they're like, fine. But, like... Like even when Still I on the journey. That demo yeah. on your channel, there's a lot yeah. of, well, I'm a lot more comfortable starting with the data and, yes. you know, aggregating it up. I'm like, well, you might be, but is that really the only True. thing? Like, at, True. And, like, I don't know, Microsoft built what right now might be the biggest company at any given day or the biggest company in the world by market cap on doing nothing yeah. but building faster horses. Like that's Microsoft's yeah. whole <laughs> reason for me and they admit it yeah. you know what I mean? like yeah. they're cheaper yeah. because they're not the best typically yeah. you know what i mean but yeah. they're good enough they have and... the scale they have the connections that right yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. hard to do that unless sigma's extra strategy getting bought by snowflake or something again I'm, i haven't spent enough time with sigma to know if that's fair to be clear but yeah. i see yeah. a lot of faster horses products because it's yeah. hard to build the other product like it's hard to get it right you know what i mean like to, to gain traction as well, you have to have a differentiator. And I, I think they have the right differentiation. I think that, like, you know, that bottom ums, bottoms up approach is the reason it resonated with me is because I think the point you're making, but from the other end, which is that it, that feels to me it's like something people can understand. And I'm talking about the, 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 you know, everyone else, the tablet I keep talking about more recently, you know, not yeah. your developers, not your creators, not your data models, like everyone else in the business, people using Pulse essentially. And it's interesting, Tableau have come out with Pulse. Um, Alteryx Auto Insights was the first time I saw something like Tableau Pulse. Alteryx, you know, have their own challenges over the years. And uh, they came out with Auto Insights out of nowhere. And I was like, ah, this is actually really good. And I was like, mm -hmm. shame it's buried inside of the Alteryx platform because right. <laughs> otherwise it would be great. Then Pulse came out and it was it was kind of a take on that, but actually very different in, in you know, long term. In fact, I used to say they're the same. Actually, I realized they're not the same at all. They, they have a very different, what's the word, outlook um, from the outset. Although they feel the same. They have a different outlook. Right. Um, I think ThoughtSpot's a lot like Paul's. Yes, yes, correct, correct, right. absolutely. And it's interesting because the thing about ThoughtSpot is I feel like they're building, they're starting with Tableau Pulse heading towards where tableau is now and then tableau feels like it's it's already got the platform but it's 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 sort of branching out into lots of these different places that it's it's not served in the past um everyone else uh, being included just to close on sigma because i do think the yes one place they could kill it but i'm not sure they're getting this um, right and i could be wrong i mean they're in the yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. is I keep saying, people keep saying the reason people use Excel. I think the pe reason people use Excel is to add more than add, lots of reasons, but the biggest is let's say I'm looking at everybody wants to do light what if. Like everybody yeah. wants to go, well, what if I increase our sales headcount by 5%? Right. But I don't want to, yeah. but maybe 10% of this region. And it's easy for like a non technical person to do, right? And yeah. everyone knows why people don't like Excel. It's not governed. It's like, whatever. Yeah. If they could lean more into the right back and yeah. give like an Excel server kind of feel yeah. that still had the chart yeah. instead of trying to compete with the tableaus of the world. When, yeah. Yeah. you know, the problem with traditional BI is it gives you a lot of answers, but you can't model a future based on it. Try, you model right. a future based on it. And we've got this high scale, you know, on top of yeah, everything else around it. it. Like, executives want that like for sure because we 
we tried to build it at Cognos with TM1 and Cognos as two set, like our planning product. And, but the, yeah. they were too monolith, you couldn't get them together. But I was always like, if I started a BI product, the single biggest differentiator I would have is right back. I was on Francois about that all the time. I'm like, why can't we get right back to hyper? Because people want to do yes. And he's like, there's yeah. lots of budgeting and planning. I go, I'm not trying to replace a, like a full on ERP or budgeting system. Yes. It's just people yeah. want to be able, when they analyze something, they go, well, Very how, ad hoc how stuff. can it be different based on, yeah. they don't want some crazy, they might say they want some crazy predictive thing. Yeah. But what they really yeah. want is just to be able to type some numbers in for formulas and see what impact it has. Yeah. And Sigma has that. I just don't, I don't know how much they're putting that forward. I think that's the thing anyway. You know and, I mean? and right. To bring that full circle, I mean, if you think to Tableau, that to me feels like the perfect training set to really make the AI problem work, help people ask better questions, right? Because if you can, if you can see what they're trying to do with their data, like what they're trying to model, what are they trying to yes. um, do? What that is essentially doing is creating the the connections in the background to help enable better questions and that's sort of the big problem with ask data in, in the past is that you've had to go in and do a lot of heavy lifting to create lenses and then yes. you, know, you go in you write the questions and the questions are really just ways to create charts without having to drag and drop but with ai and with pulse a little bit i think they have a bit more of that the, an opportunity at least to be able to sort of pair those two things up but anyway i we we, we kind of sit here and um i'd say i call it wish casting when you kind of us, us as uh, onlookers of the product, um, maybe, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, no, maybe me more than you because you've actually worked at these companies. But me more than you, <laughs> wishing, wishing, wishing everything we'd love to see, and uh, not, 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 not being in a position to able to like uh, get it going, as it were. But I'm, I'm right. sure Tablet get it all the time. Um, oh, for sure. In, in terms of, um, in terms of sort of the future, then um, I'm sure you've you've looked at Tableau Einstein. You saw the you saw the, mm -hmm. the big appeal, and I, I think. I put out a video. Um, I put it out last night, but it feels like it was today. I put it out last night, just you know, saying. Yeah, I saw, I watched I'm not it, actually yeah. sure what we saw, and, and it's it's weird because you see stuff, and you, you kind of have to allow a bit of time. And I'm a bit guilty of this sometimes. I see something, I immediately somewhere, and I immediately get my thoughts. And actually, maybe people have noticed this with the most recent release of 2014. I've not made as many videos on multi-fact analysis or that stuff yet because I'm yeah. still. I'm still assimilating and I, I want to be able to come back to it once I've really crystallized what it is. And I, I kind of think that 24.3 might have the other shoe drop for multi-fact analysis and, and a few other things. And so in, in trying to teach them, I think that would be a better package to say, okay. okay. Yeah. So 24.2 has come out, then 24.3 has come out. Now I think you can make the video that really introduces the topic because the two things that need to be get there are right here together and you can kind of get it through. Um, but anyway, that's a, that, that digression. Um, where do you think, yeah, where, where do you think, you know, Salesforce is, is going with this Einstein sort of capability? I know that's a big grand question. I'm asking you to sort of guess the future a little yeah. bit, but from what you've seen and your sort of understanding of, you know, what's happened at Tableau in the past, but how things are going. Yeah. What do you think? So I think what we're seeing is a completely different product. Uh, right. and Tableau, like a new product or? Yes. And Tableau okay. is going to continue as is. We're not seeing okay. a replacement yeah. product. Right. We're going to see Tableau Legacy, whatever it's going to be called. Yeah. Um, Francois's term compared to C when it used to be called Tableau CRM or whatever, you used to call it Tableau yes. OG, which I kind of like. So yeah. it would be Tableau OG. Tableau product. OG, yeah. And then, and then we're going to see what I think will eventually be called either Analytics or Einstein Cloud. Mode. You're right. And let me share an anecdote first, I think. Plus, I, yeah. after going to, I was at Tableau for two or three years, and there was a guy that used to be on my team at Cognos who went to SAP and got a big job, you know, VP job in their BI space. And I'm like, it's interesting. I go, we never bump into you anymore. And he goes, yeah. But he goes, I bet you don't have very many SAP customers anymore, do you? And I'm like, yeah, we don't now that you mentioned it. He goes, yeah, we got sick of you guys kicking our butts. Like we couldn't compete on it. Like Bob J was old, like you were killing us. Right. Yeah. But he goes, what we realized was um, if we embedded analytics and SAP, they weren't looking for some pure play vendor anymore. Right. <laughs> and then, and Oracle did the same thing. They bought like Hyperion. They bought a whole bunch of companies, right? And there was right. OBIE. And you, I, I think you can still, they certainly support, I think you can still buy business objects and yeah. Oracle business intelligence, right? They definitely support it. But I think 
minimal. Like, you know, they'll continue to put new connectors and yeah. that kind yeah, of yeah, stuff, yeah, yeah. right? They'll keep it live, and, yeah, yeah. And then what we saw the other day, I think, so what they probably tried to do for the past four or five years, and I don't really have inside information. I have snippets, but I don't have the story, yeah. to be clear, um, is Tableau became a monolith because they always do. Like, I did think I commented on maybe something this they go. I think we were both in the same th thread on LinkedIn where someone goes, yeah. why can't they just release the fix for like hyper for multi-fact when it wasn't in Xamarin yeah. 1? I'm like, because yeah. it's a monolith. They can't just yeah. drop. They're not like Amazon yeah. where they can just drop code on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. It's like that, uh... And it show <laughs> up, right? So, and I think what they did is they tried to embed it in Salesforce and it was probably way too hard. And then what they probably did instead was went, but you know what? The Tableau UX is pretty good. It would be mm -hmm. easier to rebuild it than it would be yes. to try to put it in. So Let's I think what we saw was completely new, but based on a UX that's based on the like IP, been, yeah, yeah, been known, yeah. And, right? Yeah. And then I think yeah. it won't need something like prep per se because I think every bit of data is going to go through data. So yeah. you will be able to bring in data breaks or whatever, but into data cloud, right? Yes. And and yes. hyper, I think they said this. I'm sure hyper still be there as an accelerator. So you won't be modeling yes. in hyper, but hopefully automatically. It'll pull yeah. data you copy? want, edit yeah. data cloud so it's faster, right? And yeah. then and it makes sense to me actually, because if if I'm using say operational BI versus say strategic decision making, whatever you want to those words get overused. But say operational for sure. And then the other yeah. I would say what what stuff like Tableau is good for um, is making decisions about the future. It's not that good for, yeah. oh, I just saw something take action. Like, you know, they always want to give that demo. It's, true. it's not true. part of a, yeah. so for those type people, why wouldn't it be? Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, I, I, so I don't think Tableau people have to panic or anything because I think Tableau's it's true. Yeah. continue, right? Yeah. It, it, yeah. it will get as much investment as the people buying it allow it to support. And then yeah. people who use Salesforce who, it's some low percentage still that use Tableau in the flow. Like it's almost like yeah. a new market for them. So yeah. I could be wrong. That's what I think we're seeing. The only thing that's perplexing to me is why they're pitching, if I'm right, is why they're pitching the Tableau community so hard in the Salesforce Correct. community. It's the yeah. part I don't understand. I can't wrap my head around. Do you know what I mean? I, but I, I wonder if <laughs> they need that community to travel into the Salesforce ecosystem to use these things because they recognize that the Salesforce ecosystem doesn't have a body of people who have the heritage and doing this ah. stuff, know the interface and know all of yeah. that stuff. And so the reason they're pitching it to us is because they do want to get a bit of that rub off. Hey, you know, the product, you understand it. Let's get you excited. Let's get you empowered to be the people that really know this stuff. And we can take that community and bring it into the self it's 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 you know um i remember when um uh mark benioff after he'd finished making dolphin noises to adam Solipsky on stage <laughs> like he said that the tableau community was you know one of the biggest value propositions of the purchase and i always think back to them i think i think he meant that in in multiple yeah. ways it wasn't just like community data fam you know look at look how much energy is in here he also meant like the literal people, the skills, the skills that community has and their ability to solve, in my opinion, monumental problems in the Salesforce data yes. system. Because <laughs> if you've ever worked with data, Salesforce, it's like a mess. Like it's, it's so hard. <laughs> right. Well, actually, and it, you know, I can't believe I didn't think of this, but I think you're right. I think that's probably, because, so yeah. as an example, I've got a really good friend who's like a three or four time Salesforce MVP, um, the amount of Salesforce in those blows my mind, like different Salesforce components and stuff. Yes. And yeah. about a couple of months ago, we got talking about data cloud, which I have a way better understanding of what it really is now. I think I've come from yeah. my certification in the next couple of weeks, like, cause I think it's going to be, I think they're putting so much in. It's, it's going to be a big um, deal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, but just to listen to him talk about it and how wrong he was, right. On his assumptions, because he doesn't right. understand data and databases from, uh, at least from an extracting data, you know, getting yes. data in, do you know what I mean? Yes. And I'm yeah. like, he could run circles around me on like how to build a lightning web component, what security is like in Salesforce, obviously, but because he's in it, but he's also natively very smart. And I'm like, they do need people. 
Like they yes. will need people, like beyond yes. just Tableau, but like yeah. data people, literally. I think you're yeah. probably right. That would make sense on what pitching it so hard. And that's why it has to be called Tableau, because without it being yeah. all that, the people would never go across. And so that's, you know, I think that is, that is, it's an interesting balance. The other thing I don't understand is it feels like they have a schedule and they have to hit certain notes to that schedule. I don't know if you get sort of get this. It's like Dreamforce is on this date and we will show you this. And then the webinar that we just had, it, in my opinion, it was no different to the conference talk, but it felt like they needed to do something in a specific window to get a like something out there. And I think it, it will make sense in hindsight, but yeah. like Do you know the term PayPal mafia? No, I do not, no, So no. there's this term about people in the Valley when it came right. to certain types of companies. They call them the PayPal mafia because they were all in the executive team at PayPal, right? right. So Elon Musk, um, right. uh, Peter Thiel. Yeah, um, yeah, I see. Reed yeah. Hoffman who went and okay. um, went in. So yeah, these guys yeah. were the PayPal mafia. Uh, my take on this is there's, no one talks about it, but there's almost an Oracle mafia, which is all these execs that came out of Oracle first learned how to sell something before they build something. So Benioff <laughs> right. is very, and it doesn't mean he's not intending to build it, but right. he's like the talking about it, it, like Dreamforce is like Christmas. Do you know what I mean? Like we right. need something yeah. at Dreamforce. And then we need to show something. Was it you that said, or someone said, I heard, I thought I heard a GA date of aiming for February 1st. Maybe I made that up, but that's the start of the fiscal year. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. so everything's very, There's the, a timeline. And, like, and we announce it before it's ready. Yes, you know I mean? Dreamforce, like, it's yeah, a very, absolutely. It all came Same out of Oracle. Pulse. Like, Siebel yep. was like that because Tom Siebel came out of back in the day. Like, Interesting. So, and, and, you know, I think Mark was the youngest VP ever at Oracle or something. Like, they had this, like, yeah. so it's almost like an Oracle mafia to me, which is this thing, which is like, you know, announce product, hype it up before it's ready, you know, which, yeah. which culture-wise was very, because I, I used to be very frustrated with Tableau because they were the other extreme to that, which is, Look at all this cool stuff it, coming. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's available now. Like they wouldn't let you in anything <laughs> before it came up. They were completely the other part. Yeah, true, true. Right? It's part of why I rest out of my channel because I was, I'd be like, go to a client and they didn't know something had happened. And I'm like, no, it's it's just all here. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Now it's the opposite. Yeah. Definitely. But you can see, like, I would say data clouds only real for what data cloud is supposed to be about now, to be honest. And yeah. they've been talking about data cloud for a long time. It used to be. CDP to get your, um, for marketing cloud to get, cause like, you know, as a marketer, you'd be like, they'd be like, run a campaign to like our top customers. I'm like, who are they? They're in Salesforce, yeah. they're in this, they're in this, and they needed a way to consolidate customers. And then from that, they learned, well, why don't we consolidate all our data but around customer? So yeah. it's smart. It just takes a longer to build software than people yeah. that are in software seem to acknowledge. It's like trying to build a, bridge under budget or something it doesn't happen yeah and but, i've also noticed a bit of an influx of people who left tableau you know during the layoffs or whatever they're very notable people coming back as well so i wonder if like yeah i, I just feel like there's something going on and i i think this time next year we'll sit back and we go oh, okay this was the play all along and they obviously can't tell you their plan as a company they've got people to please and money to make they want to help their competitors uh, along the way but there is something going on um, but I think they probably want to keep their options open and they don't want to hurt revenue streams in the meantime. Do you know what I mean? But Correct. Yeah, it's a but, delicate ship. Yeah. yeah. But I miss what you're saying, which makes complete sense to me. I mean, the Tableau consulting community, I think I have this number, I should be happy about it. I don't, I've never figured out, but for every dollar a Tableau sold, like there's not a lot of consulting sold, right? For every dollar of sales force that's sold, I think the number is $6.19, the consulting. Yes. I know yes. for sure, I hope I'm not making that number up. I know for sure when Lou Gerstner, who ran IBM and turned it around and then left, in the notes at the end of the book, he took shots at a lot of people. And he said, I'd like to thank Larry Ellison and whoever was running SAP at the time, but you know, Larry Ellison right. and Oracle, he goes, because for every dollar of software you sold in global business services, we made $7. Like it's, <laughs> it's a much more lucrative <laughs> consult yeah. sales forces than tab because Tableau's because it's kind of easy to use and, and the community is so powerful. Audiences. 
Yeah. Right. And the community is so powerful. Like it's not a great, and you see all these tableau consulting companies get pulled into doing Databricks or Snowflake or something because like the bigger yeah. meteor, kind of, but the Salesforce ones are, but that's going to be meaty because there's a lot of process in it. Like it's not nice. a flaw in the product. It's like, there's a lot of like, um, not only integration work, but there's a lot of management yeah. consulting that goes into that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah, be, definitely. I wouldn't be scared of this at all. I mean, being scared of a technology change is just a ridiculous thing anyway, because it's yeah. inevitable. But uh, but I think this could have went a lot worse than this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they yeah. could have said it wasn't what we thought, and we're just going to let it wither and die. And like, like, yeah, sem- or yeah, sold it off nice. to like a... I don't um, know. Yeah. You know what I mean? Microsoft. It happens. <laughs> right? You know what I mean? yeah. Well, yeah. The word, they'd sell it off to some... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, those investment Venture capital, that all the, it, squeeze it out, yeah. yeah. Yeah, just to, like, squeeze every penny, but not in that, like... Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, um, I think that's what's happened to all tricks. Like, I, mm-hmm. I'm fairly sure that's what's about yeah. to happen to all tricks, yeah. So um, we should be happy that didn't happen. Do you know what I mean? True, like, true. It's got, it actually happen. found a home. Um, and, yeah, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm an optimistic with, with, with change. Uh, you know, I... I I do, I do get the concern that people have, you know, um, people put a lot of time and energy building profiles and personas, but you know, that, that's sort of like a, a small subset of the whole landscape. And I think a lot of people who use Tableau today, use many tools. They're not just wedded to Tableau oh. and, um, they can and showcase frequently. They are able to adapt and learn new things because new technologies that work with Tableau have come and they've learned them. Right. So mm-hmm. I, well, my, my advice to the community should be whether you like Salesforce as a product or not aside, their community, that's the one thing for Synergy, for sure. They're a very, very powerful community. Yes. And, yeah. and yeah. they have gotten that their success is in having all these MV. I, I went to one Dreamforce and it is amazing and how many stories are around people that were, I don't know, they were working in some other complete industry and through Trailhead, they taught them to do this and they became a Salesforce of men and they're making 5X of what they used to make. And yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how many of these stories are, but just the fact that there's any, you know what I mean? Like how Correct, many companies, yeah. like you don't see a lot of people who were tending bar one day who's an Oracle DBA for years. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like it's yeah. kind of unique and cool. So I, yeah, and that way at least they get, you know, I can't knock their community. I think it's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think, you know, five years from now, um, we could be at the precipice of some really, really exciting sort of um, opportunities with Tableau because at least this this new change they're pushing down allows them to take on, I think, things that have been on the cutting room floor at Tableau for years, like decades. We're only just seeing some of that stuff actually get solved. And I think I always highlight that, look, if you look at the last two years and some of the things they've they've solved, those those have been on the floor for a long, long time. Long time. Never made yeah. it onto a to do list, and they're getting they're getting looked at. And they're getting done. They're, they're getting mm-hmm. delivered. So, um, okay, it might be to synergize with the Salesforce platform, but nonetheless, it doesn't matter. Well, like, well I think well, the, another thing Salesforce and Tableau share is like a clicks not code kind of. Of course, yes. there's a little bit of code, but mostly yeah. they're in different ways. One's drag and drop, one's wizard, but most of them mm. are. Um, and a lot of the things Tableau needed to do to extend their ecosystem if they didn't go this way require code. Yes. And like yeah. it just doesn't feel right. Like do you know what DBT I mean? Like, and it's, all that it, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm even thinking just to integrate into someone else's workflow or something. Like it's oh, not true, as yeah. easy yeah. as people think it is, right? Yes. And yeah. and that's a Microsoft. I keep saying anyway that the reason the people who like love Power BI, I would say they probably came from a developer background. Like I had someone oh, open in front of me again today. I'm like, it's like I'm staring at Visual Studio. Man. Like it just the feel <laughs> of it, even right? Like it's familiar so, to the Microsoft people. Yeah, so but for them to build <laughs> integrations, like a lot of them are probably more true developer um, focused, yeah. right? Yeah, Versus, yeah. but in the Salesforce world, it's like. Yeah, if I want to take action on something I see, they have an action framework that I could hook into if it was built in the same UI that I wouldn't need to be a like a hardcore developer to write. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like yeah. I'd be more exactly. like the same level of skill of a t- technical level of skill of a tableau person, which I would say is a um, you know a very smart person that doesn't have this huge syntax or maybe desire to sit in an IDE all day long. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Like I've written code for like a lot of years and I hate it. You know what I mean? Just because it's so yeah. inefficient of a thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's, yeah exactly. Yeah. 
Incredible. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. I was so much, so much to look forward to. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I think. Um, I'm, I'm, I work in consulting as well, so I always do wonder if our perspective in consulting kind of skews our perspective on the product a little bit. Because I think if you work in a company and you just have one stack, right? You don't intermingle so much with um, some of the other ideas coming from different different platforms, different ecosystems. Yeah. And I wonder if that's where the concern comes from, right? Because you use Tableau. This is the one of the big things you use. And actually, the product is telling you you're going to have to change it. And that, that can kind of feel like um, not an attack on your character, but given the amount of energy people put into Tableau, when the software is telling you, no, you need to change, it's kind of like right. you're staring at a mirror, right? Whereas in consulting, we're always used to change. Like our clients are telling us to yeah. change, you know, we're always wrong, right? Like, <laughs> so, could be right. I mean, it is the biggest, that. It, the biggest paradox, I think, the big, it'd be one of the biggest paradoxes of like our species, which I don't get is how we're in a constant state of change, but most people hate change. It's the, oh the yeah. Same yeah. Tra- like, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Gosh. Um, what else have we not talked about? Um, okay, um, kind of trying to think I think I, I don't think maybe that we didn't talk about because we got onto that, which was great, was just this, te- like, with the near term future, right? With yes. Like Pulse and Einstein Copilot and things yes. that are going to affect people today. Yes. Um, and we talked about a little bit with Pulse. We you did. are like, so I used to say to people before, if you had a bad data model in Tableau, but you were yeah. really good at writing calculations. Um, forget about you'd have an inefficient workbook, but again, if you didn't have a lot of data, you could, you could viz your way and calc your way out of a bad data model. Yeah. Copilot and Pulse are useless. Do you know what I mean? And, and, and everything yes. new coming without a good data, because they're, yes. they're implying a good data model. It's inherent do. in the, it's a, it's a built-in assumption into the way they mm-hmm. built the product, even the interface, even the advanced features in Pulse actually require you to have a good model because, and this is this is the bit I don't understand is, you can't see the model in Pulse, right? You, you could build a fantastic model and you can add calculations, but you can't mm-hmm. see the model the way you can see it in the relationships, you know, connection, well, it, right? You can't. Sorry, I'll, well, I'll cut you short. No, no, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. But don't you know, the other thing that I say to people that it takes a while to get around is you, unless the new, ver- I haven't played with the new, new, newest release of Pulse if it's out yet, I should look. Um, but all the calcs that you write in that awful interface, which I almost wish they didn't give you, and just say you have yeah. to go back to your data model, right? Yeah. Is, they have to be row level calculations. That's yes. why you can't do yes. table calculate because they're going to try to aggregate it and do it over time. So it's got to be row level. Right, like they don't, but they don't express it that way, right? So an LOD will work because it's yeah. always a row level, right? Yeah. But you can't. And people are like, well, what? I'm like, there's no way they could do a table calculation though. Again, Any other you can't way. table yeah. calculate your way out of this problem because yeah. that's an in-memory thing and it's loading directly against the model, right? Yes. So yeah. people like those concepts. People kind of have to. And once you do, it's a do you know what I mean? Like so, yeah. I run a workshop in Canada for this, like a virtual workshop of a video on, like in 50 minutes, I show how to use Pulse properly in like 48 of it's the data model, where to secure it, how I would, how I would almost always create brand new models, because otherwise people yeah. are going to troll through fields you don't want them tro- trolling. Correct. And I go, it's easy, I'm you just take curated. one and re- yeah. hide a bunch of fields, republish it, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Put it on the yeah. schedule, put yeah. it in its own project, secure that project for the people you want to see it, boom, yeah. you're gone you know what i mean yeah. maybe an entitlements yeah. table bam right um yeah. uh quick so and i think but the thing that people don't realize is uh, tableau's actually always been that way it just people fight it with crazy calculate like tableau expects like i don't think people think about this enough like when you connect to data tableau doesn't give you an opportunity to def- anything other than to define one of those fe- like you know every column is a yeah. field and it's going yeah. to try to aggregate that field right yeah. so I say to people yeah. all the time, if you, and it's in the book, of course, if you have aggregate, if you have like, if you have a field called measure name and another one with value, basically or metric name, and you conditionally say if it's equal to this, then return that. Effect. Like Tableau does not perform. Like some other BI tools are fine with that, it doesn't, right? Because yeah. it's Tableau doesn't like and, it. Yeah. And even behind the scenes, what they were smart about is I think they're leveraging things like if it's in a column, it's an array. Right. And so True. CPUs are set up for that. So if you say, what's yeah. the median value? It knows it doesn't have to find it. 
yes. right? Uh, yeah. And if you say maximum, it knows because it's stored it. So it's it can stored it in the, the right top, order. Off the bottom, yeah. right? So it's yeah. not yeah. running through that. And it's well, why some things are so bad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. No, and, it's true. And again, if you use relationships, you don't need to use count distincts anymore, which people don't think about because Tableau's smart enough to count it in the dimensions. Correct way. Yeah. Right? Like that kind of stuff. That's interesting. But, yeah. And, and the last thing I would say is, is I'm not sure how good um, Paulson, these products are going to be for your typical business user. I can't believe this hasn't been a bigger thing in the Tableau community before it came out. Is I want to see relations. I'm going to want to see correlations. I don't even think about them as correlations as a business mm -hmm. user, but I want to see correlations across different parts of my business for sure. And Tableau's never been able to model that before. Like, uh, okay. like you know, like we're discounting tables in the East. A lot of the time, I'm like, people probably knew that. Do you know what I mean? If they didn't yeah. know that, I question. Do you know what what I mean? It took them a long time to find it, but you showed it quicker. <laughs> but you know, if it's because we don't have enough inventory, so you know, our support calls are up. Like people have no idea. That's what they do not know. Like I would say yeah. Tableau's usefulness went up by 10 X in real world when they added this multi-fact thing. It's that big. Like, and yeah. I keep saying that yeah. people are like, oh, you're hyperbole. I yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I go, if they use it right, it is. Cause it's a business user. I want you to find correlations that I just couldn't find. Right. Yeah, and, exactly. and if it's, if it's all like a set of measures that look the same, you don't have to shape the same. Like I probably, I could find that some other way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But it gets really yeah. powerful. Like, uh, I, I hope I, I got to play with this a little more that like ex the explain data even feature ever is going to show up should find really cool things now. Do you know what should. I mean? Because, yeah. yeah. Right. It's just, yeah, true, true. It's, it's almost ahead of its time. Yeah. It's a good point right. actually. Cause the, but the big challenge to this point is it continues to be is it's hard to do multi-fact, not on real world data because you yes. can't find fake data that's conformed that's, to yeah. one dimension. <laughs> like, it just doesn't exist. Like that was a lot yeah. of using uh, Adam Miko's data mock started before, like taking yeah. data going, could you turn it into yeah. support data back? Like I'm trying to fake yeah. that data out for TC. Yeah. That's not that easy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, I'm very starting easy. to work with clients with real world scenarios now for sure. Yeah. Right. But um, it's a good point. Yeah. I had it's, it is a, it's an evolving, it goes, it goes back to what we discussed about earlier, which is how does, how does, how does someone know whether or not to do something? And I think I wish Tablet took a bolder steps to say, Hey, look, I know you're using a join and a left join. Yeah. We've converted it to a relationship for you. Yeah. Right. Just, just do that. Like take that action, not as an instruction, but as um direction if that makes sense and so mm -hmm. you build a model how you think you want it built but mm -hmm. we'll rationalize it when we you know there's that performance enhancer thing right like yeah, yeah. one one capability of that could be mm -hmm. hmm looks like you've done a left join but you've really not done anything that our relationship can't do click this button and we'll turn it into a relationship and do all the switcheries for you. I know that's a yeah. big task, yeah. but that, that's the kind of, that's the yes. kind of like, that's the kind of, you know, like thing that I think people would go, Oh, okay, cool. Right. All right. Yeah, sure. Right. And now they're using a relationship. They don't realize the benefit, but then later on they'll try something and that's mm -hmm. when they'll realize, okay, this is what's going on. It's, it's yeah. small things like that. Well, because really, really it's a really good point because it's not very discoverable right now. Correct. Correct. Right. You, you have to like, um, you have to put it in the way of people to get it to mm -hmm. work. And even, even in the visual, like it says, drag it in and do the noodle. And people are like, but that's different. And they double click in and they do the join. They're like, ah, familiarity, you know, like, right. <laughs> yes. right. No, it's for very sure. straightforward. And they, uh, yeah. And, and I mean, the last mind bendy thing on it, I would say is having been a VI now for 25 years, right? You have all these like small normalized tables underneath applications, right? Yep. So they'd have many up because that's efficient way to write data. into them. So you would never see a big fat, like one great big table under an application that would have, because it only updates the customer table and it needs to update the customer table. Yeah. And yeah. in 20, 25 years ago, we said, well, that's not very efficient. 
Um, uh, <laughs> you have to you have to denormalize that table. So you have to take all those tables and munch them together. And sure, it's going to explode, but you know that's the only way that uh, that you can expect, expect getting performance out of them, right? And then yeah, yeah. we also then said, and you should pull cubes off them. But then and then and then so but then we gave up on cubes because only because computers got faster, and we went. Yeah. Um, and we went, no, actually, you know what? With Tableau, you can just build hierarchies. You don't need to force them into a cube, but there's only one yeah. way down. And Tableau yeah. can do that because computers are kind of faster in that amount of time more than anything. But yeah. now, what we're Bad saying back. is, effectively, I'm, I could, you know, I'm saying, if you're using Salesforce as, or any other app, so just we're talking about Salesforce, right? So take your tables, right? If they're, you know, if you have good processes, your data should be clean anyway. Do you know yeah. what I mean? snapshot those tables exactly as they are, we'll model them like that and dynamically query only what we need from them at runtime. That's yeah. what relationships yeah. are, right? So it's, yeah. you know, so at the extreme, and again, it would never happen like this because combining data, but if you had one app, say you were a small company, you ran everything on Salesforce, we did sales cloud service cloud, right? The dimensions are conformed anyway. And if you had good processes, you could say, you don't need data engineering, just when you connect Tableau to that, we automatically take a snapshot of that into Hyper, so we're not querying that Oracle database underneath. It would grind you to a halt, right? Yeah. Um, and then you just drag and drop and we'll dynamically create the data model for you on the fly, only for the questions you're asking. We're not gonna pre-compute a whole bunch of stuff you might not ever need, right? Yeah. And we're never gonna eliminate answers. That, that's how powerful it is. And I don't yeah. think, I'm not sure how many people understand that's what it is. Yeah. Like, it's a hard one. Yeah. It's a hard one. I, I, I don't, don't even know to, how to, I I'm struggling to explain to people, not what it does. I'm having a hard time expl trying to why explain it to people why it matters and that they never had it before. So when I talk True. to say Tableau AEs, they're like, we could always do that. <laughs> no, you couldn't. No, you couldn't. Just, well, no, you <laughs> Right, but they're not or if he did, it was messy, and you didn't realize, um, you right. know, what like what trick someone was doing. Like you're passing filters to two charts, yeah. and then I have to yeah. look to see if they're correlated. Yeah, yeah, and it's, oh god, yeah. It's People okay. doing I, scaffolding, I so. and yeah. Oh yeah, someday I hope I have. Well, I had one yesterday that was really some guy had two tables, um, for it was calls and sales or something, and then he had a customer table that it conformed to, and it's natural to try to do this. He goes, but my numbers don't do. Don't work up by date. I go, well, which date are you picking? Right? And he goes, from one of the two, I go, well, the other one doesn't know that. Like the other table doesn't know that date. I go, yeah, all you have to yeah. do is just scaffold a date table to both of those. So he had customer, because you would have had to before, customer, yeah. then the other two tables hung off it. I go, flip yeah. that. So if the other two tables hang customer, now the yeah. base tables also hang a date off those. Yeah. Like we did this in real time in 10 minutes. I go, now bring that new date. I was lucky I already had a scaffold table, right? Good. So you I go, send now, it over, yeah. Yeah. Um, now drag that new date on, boom, the calculator, just like that. Yeah. I'm like, you've been struggling yeah. with it for like hours and hours and hours. And he goes, I don't think I get this to work for like 10 minutes. And, and you touched on something there. I was like, even that, like what if Tableau just had an inbuilt date <laughs> table, right? So you didn't have to get the scaffold yeah. set up, like specifically for this use case. Power BI has it, right? I, exactly. I, 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 I talk to Thomas about this. I go, the two things, that, the two features I want more than, and, and I go, we wouldn't have needed composable data sources you know, really big with these two. One is yeah. I want to be able to right click on the cam or whatever the thing is and go, give me a day table. And it just shows yes. up, right? And it's just sitting in, in hyper yeah. in the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. The other thing I can't believe we haven't had this whole time is, why do I have to in prep? So if I'm, I barely use prep anymore. Like sometimes you have to, for sure. But I often dump yeah. to Snowflake or something, right? Or a flat file. Because what I want to do is I don't want to publish a data source. I want to publish a table because it's a table anyway. And why can't I get at hyper tables? I understand. This is, I think the performance impact of these composable data sources might be harder than people think. We'll see. But I go, right, you right, could have see. avoided the biggest use case for it if you let me publish hyper tables and then let me join hyper tables together. Together, rather than desktop. a data source. Because it's a database anyway. Yes. Like, why not let me publish it to a namespace in hyper yes. on my Tableau yes. file site and then yeah. let me see the tables on it? Just yes. like a database. Just like create that, that restriction. Yeah, yeah. Well, because it's there anyway. Yeah. They just don't expose it. Because. Yeah, true. 
Because it's that just a good point. Yeah. Like that's all. Like it would have been easy to understand. So simple. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, yeah. why do I have to publish this thing as a data source? I want to publish it as a table, and I I don't have right access to my company Snowflake or SQL Server or whatever. Yeah. Like yeah, don't want to that go one back seems like an easy it. one. Yeah. To me. Yeah. Right. Small things like that, I think, would just really help with the pickup of this kind of stuff. You know, the silly, um, yeah, like being able just to s specify like a sequential numeric sequence, like a date sequence, specify the start and then how much further into the future you want to go. And then just to let Tableau run that um, well, for you and then you don't have to bring it in. And then and the, the data model would fly. To they could go to infinity and if they, they don't need yeah. to, but if they went to infinity on the date in the future, yeah. the relationship is never going to call that data anyway. So it doesn't matter. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like exactly. the, the whole yeah, beauty yeah. of the relationship is it's, that's never going to come back in the query from that table. Yeah. And you could do wonderful things like mess around with time zones and like all, all of that beautiful stuff that could be done beautifully and elegantly the way Tableau does it could just, just like come fiscal year. There's all that stuff yeah, built exactly. in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just get that for free. Um, so it'd be, right. yeah, that, that to me is like, it's those little things that I wonder, like, I know, I know the team's like, yeah, we sit on the outside looking and oh, if you come, if you just do this, but like, you know, Thomas and team, they're working at like, <laughs> like big problems, like really big problems. And then, once they enable those things, we come flooding in with all these little requests that we go, oh, just do this, do this, do this. Well, I think having, it's, it's, yeah. and it's having great to be able to do that. Yeah. A product manager for a lot of years is, I think what people like that have to deal with that we don't see is- Oh, the, in terms of, oh my word. It, well, also, but the, but the amount of technical debt in the product that we don't see that when they try to build something, it doesn't work like the way and they have to clean they it up. Gonna work. Yeah. Like the, yeah. the, literally the only reason I would do custom SQL right now is in this multi-fact world, the only way you can filter a table on the number of years is if you do it by custom SQL. Cause otherwise the way the query stack is, if you put any kind of filter and it forces a draw an inner join across every table, right, which is right. crazy. But, um, but they are going to fix that with something. There's going to be another thing in the order of operations above context Ooh. filter called table filter. Or sorry, Ooh. they might call it something else, but it's effectively going to be a table yeah. filter, yeah. which is I yeah. only want to filter a table first before you do anything to it, which right. makes sense in the order of operations. But again, True. it seems like an easy thing. It's relatively easy. Yeah. Well, maybe not UX wise, but but definitely it's hard because they've got this query stack underneath that they didn't write. It was written it's never 15 touched, yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the yeah. part. It's yeah, it's like so a rule set. That's... About on the outside, yeah, you know what I mean? yeah. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, because the other thing is, I I don't know why Tableau from day. I understand why they don't let us see BizQL. I guess, although I really think they should have talked about it more. I talked to. Andrew Beers, way back when we got, I got hired in my first boot camp, he gives a presentation. I'm like, why don't? Why is that presentation not out for everyone? Like, it's yeah. It's yeah. like, well, that's our secret sauce. I'm like, they'd still have to copy it. You know what I mean? It's patented. Uh, yeah. Way. And but at a minimum, like, I don't know why they won't let you see the sequel they generate because they do some brilliant stuff. Like, uh, Annie Nelson had a great post because she traced it right. Like, lots of times, I think people don't trust relationships as well because it gives answers that joints effectively couldn't give without building temp tables first yes. and what Tableau is doing which people don't know is lots of times it's reusing the thing that's been in forever with um uh blends which are terrible yeah. experience but what it does is it queries both it brings them back and it stitches the query together on the, in the product in the product so it's like yeah. That's why I can do all that multi levels of aggregation thing that would be yeah. nasty in SQL. Like, I'm to do I'm the stages yeah. the subquery review first and then join yeah. it to the other side. Yeah. But they don't have to do that, is why it's fast. And people yeah. are like, yeah. I hear relationships are slower than joins, but I haven't had anyone prove it to me yet. I'm like, I don't know no, no. the use case of I've only ever had it faster. Me. Yeah. I don't I, know. I, I think I it, conceptually it, don't know how it could be slower, literally, knowing how it works. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Like, every. Yeah, I was explaining this to, to a colleague actually today and they were asking some questions and they were asking about entitlement tables. And I was like, yeah, relationships every day of the week, just, just, just huge relationship. And they were like, oh, what? Oh, and they kind of thought it through and they were like, oh, okay. If I use a join, it would explode the data by the number of people in my entitlement table. And I'm like, exactly. 
and they did it and we did it and we kind of came to like a, a, a demo solution. We were like, oh, we have a thousand records in that table and we have 50,000 records in that table. And at query, Tableau just takes the one person from the entitlement table and the rows they're meant to see and the result is less than the like less than what would have been i don't know what it what it is because i don't know how many rows people see but it, you can go into millions if you're not careful <laughs> you know fifty thousand by a thousand people right <laughs> tens what? of millions right, and it so comes out as just like a few thousand like it's, and it's it's fast it's crazy <laughs> well i think i have this this diagram i think i put the diagram in the on the multi-fact blog i did yes. on the flourish yes. twins yes. again where i'm just like one's multiple yeah, one multiplies together all your rows and columns, right, with a join and eliminates answers. The other one adds them up and doesn't eliminate answers. It's crazy. Like, <laughs> like you're not trading anything up. You're getting the best yeah. performance, right? Um, yeah. Like that, the one where we started this whole thing with the Airbnb example, if I can show comments or whatever, I've tried in the demo to show how big it would be if I joined it, forget about how long it would take, and I haven't been able – I've got like a MacBook with sixty. I haven't been able to get the. I haven't been able to get thing to finish. It, it won't even finish because it's just taking right? so long. Um, and it just instantaneous. Need a server. <laughs> it's inst yeah, I should. Well, wait. I can use one of my tablet files. Like, Hire yeah. some AWS I uh, credits. Well, I, could, I should try to get see if tablet file will do it for me. But um, but yeah. it would be so big. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then in yeah. slot, and I'm like, the other one's like, because what it's doing is it's packing up what it wants and it's issuing the query again just to yeah. bring back what it needs to bring back. And your yeah. exact example, the same client I have, it's a, yeah, they, part of the, it's a call center app and they, they outsource some of it and insource some of it. So they need a vet, a lock on their outside vendors on what they can see. Yeah. And they, until relationships came, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it properly. Yeah. They couldn't do it because it, the biz was so slow. And then they throw this vendor, everyone's like, bro, level security is so slow. Like I watched them have a new team member. We do office hours and they'll build out a new one. And he's like, you need a vendor lock on that. I'm like, oh, that's going to slow it down. They add one calculated field and the thing performs exactly the same. Or at least you can't yeah. perceive the difference. It's the same. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's yeah. like, it's. But there's, there's old blog posts out there that tell you that like doing it, like, without the knowledge of the new capability that these sort of folklore things like don't do this in tableau tableau likes the data in this track you know these things that were like really from way back when the products changed a lot since computers mm -hmm. are faster as well so actually some of those things even if they're still true and they are slower you wouldn't notice the difference because your laptop like you know, yeah, minces so through it and the clouds mince mince through it actually the large scale data as you talk about is where you see these problems and even at that scale it's really hard nowadays in the product to make that mistake because of some of the good practice they've put into um, into some of the way you build things. But well, still a long way to go with data literacy. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're going on with this forever, but you just reminded me of another good reason Tableau might want to do that joins versus relationship thing is given that they don't charge for consumption on cloud, do you think it would be in their yeah. best interest to drive compute? <laughs> true, true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we should get on Brian and team about that's that a great, reason alone to do that is because like great, it would drop the AWS charges thing. like crazy. That is a great thing. Is you know, hey, look, why didn't you sponsor community content on this? Because this is what it can do to your tablet like cloud. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you did you pick up on the hyperforce migration? Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I got an email like was it yesterday to my work instance of Tableau Cloud. And it talks about um, moving Tableau Cloud and it's specifically US East, which is they use the same pods as AWS. So yep. US East, they're moving it to Hyperforce. And Hyperforce is Salesforce Cloud sort of AWS instance. And mm -hmm. going back to our discussion earlier on about, you know, what's going on with Tableau and everything, this move from Tableau for, for Tableau Cloud to move to this more central AWS ecosystem makes me think back to like what we we're talking on earlier on about, which is what's going on behind the scenes. And this is a huge monumental thing. Like oh, yeah. for context, you have to tell all your admins to change the IP addresses they've whitelisted and full record Tableau ones never change. The Salesforce ones change every month. <laughs> so like, yeah, you're right. like they're not going to love you for that. And then, and right. then secondly, like, the, the 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 potential for like just monumental screw ups is going to be incredible. So 
I think this is another thing that people are going to sleep on. And then it's going to happen in November and December. The deadline is January. Oh, yeah. And wow. that's when I think it will hit. But the Salesforce and Tableau have been saying it. Like the emails are coming out. And I think it's right. people just well, missing it. Well, you know what? We, uh, we should definitely stay in touch on this because most <laughs> of our clients are Canadian and we're Canada. And Canada is the first pod go. So oh, we're there we go. <laughs> we're going to go first. Yeah. One of the last Tableau pods to go up, first one to go over. And I'm not sure. I have to spend more time understanding why they're doing it because I think the reason, because I was at the Dreamforce where it was announced again five years ago. Yeah. Dream, like yeah. it's going to be out in no time, Hyperforce. The, the idea was that then they could put it on Azure GCP as well as AWS. So Interesting. your data egress cost would be nothing, right? So if you're paying BigQuery, if you're paying Google on an egress thing and you could drop it in, in the same pod, could do zero but now it's AWS yeah. only. I'm guessing they found out that they have way too many dependencies on AWS Probably. specifically and backend monitoring yeah. and stuff, which again. Yeah. And they've brought the data owners to the platform, Zero Copy, Snowflake, Google, um, Databricks, right? They right. brought those people to the data source rather than going out to like oh, platforms yeah. that might have that ecosystem. So anyway. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. All these bridge clients are going to start. I saw a bunch of bridge clients fail. Bridge like, clients. Oh, oh, my God. God. I oh, my God. Bridge <laughs> clients. <laughs> oh, I was like, well, like, because I'm on, like, I'm an administrator on a bunch of client sites and my oh inbox my is filled up and I'm like, I think the first thing that happened yesterday, and then I went, no, no, no. Yeah. Oh, but soon, God. Canada, soon. Like, it's the thing. Bridge clients. Jeez, that is a painful. I mean, bridge client, bridge is always fun. It'll be a bridge is one of these things. Yeah, still, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. God, if you've got like a distributed, um, it's the consultancies that fill this pain. If you're managing or helping a customer, and um, they will absolutely not have a clue. They're missing these emails. You're not getting the emails about it. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to be like, right, I've got 20 clients to go through and change all their bridge oh, instances. Yeah. It's It'll just be like, a oh, God, nasty yeah. day. I'll keep you posted because I'm going to get hit first. first. Yeah, let me know. Let me know. Like <laughs> Oh God, I've, I've had you on for way too long. Uh, no, this is so much fun. Like, I know, so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> we should we should have a chat again once all yeah. the dust is settled with um with Einstein. And I do think in a year's time we should probably revisit data modeling because I felt like data modeling has just been this moving target. Even with the data model, I feel like I just started to understand it. The multi felt fact analysis sort of has come online, and I'm like, okay even more is going to happen. And I think with the way the ecosystem's going, we are going to get to like, you know, a place where I think data modeling in Tableau, specifically the authoring experience is in a really, really good place. Yeah. And many of the things that we've had to go out to do in lots of other tools will become mm -hmm. possible, but there'll be an approach to doing it in Tableau that will be specific to the ecosystem and potentially with where Salesforce goes with data cloud and all that stuff specific to how the whole sort of um, setup works. So I think that will be an interesting transition to see um, how, it, how it plays out and that your opinion on that would be huge. Yeah. Valid. So I would love to have I'd you back to, to sort of touch on that it, as well. I'll leave you one to think about too is um, when you start playing a little more with multi-fact, um, although the whole concept's hard to explain, the interesting thing is um, I have a feeling that it makes for people who haven't yet understood relationships ironically, easier to understand relationships. And the reason is because it does things that they couldn't write SQL to. So right. it forces them to think about what's going on. And then I think yeah. that my hypothesis it starts is to connect. Go, oh, I got it did without even these multiple base tables, but right. I never took the time before because I wanted to control it, but I couldn't SQL my way into this model, right? Yeah. So yeah. anyway, then. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. We'll see. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. I'll look out for that. Um, yeah. We we have a we have a closing tradition. It's a very new one. It's okay, not that yeah. old. Where the previous <laughs> guest asks the next guest a question. It's copied off um, a podcast by Stephen Bartlett, Diary of a CEO. But I think it's really good in this ecosystem yeah. because we have lots of people working in data doing different things. The previous guest was Katrina Mena. You watched the video, yeah. and yeah. Uh, at the end of that, she asked. Um, what is sort of your most impactful or memorable project that you've worked at that you, you can share as it were? I appreciate that in consulting, you, you can't often talk <laughs> about your clients. So you, you can sort of allude to it or talk about the component that you found interesting in that sense. Uh, can I go way back on this yeah, one? Absolutely. Like, you can go as far back as you want. One. No, so, no, it could be anywhere. Any, any, any context applies. You're the guest. You can choose. Um, 
I'll, I'll, make, I'll sink this one. I'll make this one as short as I can. So I, I, I actually, I started programming, I'll show my age, on the VIC-20 when I was 10 years old. But yeah. uh, I had this weird thing with my parents where they made enough money where they could, um, they didn't have a lot of money, but they, they were going to pay for my university. But they were going to make me go to the one in town unless I found something. It's a right. terrible reason to pick a career, unless I found one that went away. So instead of going into computer science, I went into pharmacy, of all things. Right. So I'm actually a pharmacist. And then okay. first pharmacy I went into, this is now this is in the days pre-internet. Not a lot pre-internet, but a little bit pre-internet. And, uh, yeah. and the way they used to do inventory management in the pharmacy was, um, you know, they'd you know, if you if something ran out, like pills ran out in the bottle, you'd write it on the list, right? Yeah. And someone would key those numbers in, hold it up to a phone, and it would kind of go out. Or and then we had a pharmacy tech once a week go around and shake bottles to see if anything was missed. I'm like, this is <laughs> yeah. insanity, right? Yeah. And then so um, I brokered a deal with our owner and a wholesaler to go single supplier, and we had automatic order. I worked with our software vendor to bring it in, and then this thing dialed out on a modem every night. But like we got. We got our turns up by like four X or something and our inventory down by 33%. And we used to store it about two people a day and we got down to a half. <laughs> and it was just, the reason it was so fulfilling to me is it kind of set my career going. I'm right. going to focus on using software and business to make processes better because it actually makes people's, I mean, it doesn't make lives better like a charity does, but it, you know, people are doing these mundane, useless tasks. It does, yeah. It Do you know what I mean? That, and so it's been kind of ingrained in me since then that I'm just like always on the lookout for like what software and problems like kind of intersect that like I can help people, you know, focus on the actual job instead of arguing about, you know, stuff that there's an answer yeah. that they could just get at it or whatever. So it happened yeah. really early in my career. Um, and that's why, like, when I see this integrated Salesforce thing, I'm like, oh, that'd be awesome. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. in yeah. the experience. You know I mean? like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, seeing the opportunity in that, absolutely, I couldn't agree more. And it's a uh, that is it, you're fortunate to have had that experience because I think a lot of people in their careers um, get that a little bit later on because you know the world of work today is, is sometimes quite prescriptive, right? Like it's you know it's it's harder to be that kind of person who can go and suggest that kind of thing. So unless you work in a really small organization, you're not going to get kind of get that exposure. So. If you can get that kind of opportunity, I always recommend people do go work in the smallest company with the most exposure to the stuff yes. you want to get closer to, because that's the best way to learn. Oh, I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. And then um, the final bit is you—you you get to ask oh, a random question, a question to the is next it, to the next guest, and I—I I answer it in this in this video, but they answer it obviously in the next one. So uh, it can be anything; it doesn't have to be Tableau, just data related. Um, 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 it's really open to you. Right. So if um, if a uh, venture capitalist came up to you and handed you a hundred million dollars and you knew 20 developers that were ready to mm -hmm. go, what analytic, what would the analytics product you build look like? Oh, wow. That is a big question. What would the, what would it look like? See that, is that the same question as what it would do? Or is that like, yeah, are you yeah, asking I mean, what would you, yeah, what what would I build with it is really what you're asking, right? Right, because um, it's a little, it's a little easy and too easy, like we talked about, because we don't know all the technical dead and bugs yeah, and priorities yeah, to say how yeah. we'd make Tableau better. But yeah, if, you were to, if you were to go whiteboard from scratch, do you know what I mean? Would it be, uh, you know, Figma with query in it? Like, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's wide open. I think, and I'm going to take a, a bit of inspiration from um, something I've seen. Uh, Cole, I uh, never know how to say her surname. Uh, oh yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's written a she's written a, a book, a data book for children. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest problems I think we have is people learn about data and the tools for data too late. So oh. I think I'd try and build a product. Oh, nice for education that helps mm -hmm. teachers teach data and in it in itself it would be a data product if that yeah. makes sense right like you sort of mm -hmm. learn by doing but it's contextual to the job of being a you know in a class it's contextual to the way a student goes about their education and it makes it makes the things they do in school and the data around them more contextual 
and okay. I, it's you know it's, i don't know I'm, I'm not sure it would be a great business because you know schools are frugal places and uh you know 100 million dollars i'd probably burn the money and not make a profit right <laughs> No, uh, <laughs> okay, there's a lot of people. There's a lot of people in the school space, actually. I just right, think. right. But I, you I know, think you just have to sell all the schools to make money. So, like, correct, your product has correct, to be good enough to sell correct, all the schools. That's correct. The but you know, I kind of think like you know, I used to remember my school used to use something called FileMaker Pro to as a date pro, data yeah. product to manage like records and stuff like that. And it was, you know, fine. It was a database tool ish, and it worked on yeah. Macs, and yeah. you know, the school had Macs and stuff like that. But it, it was very niche. So I'm not even sure if anyone still uses that. I'm sure someone does, and you know, runs yeah. like uh, the whole entire system off it. But you know, I think I think well, what else do people have? And it's Excel and Google Sheets, and I think. A sort of part of the problem, right? You, you're taught this conceptual way of working with data that I think doesn't open your open up your mind to like the wonderful creative ways that you can work with data that you learn later on in life. Right. And so, if you can instill that Before. tool and that capability in young people, I wouldn't be surprised if they then go on to do incredible things with data in the future, like inherently, right? Mm -hmm. And so, that to me is where I'd build a product really. Sort of trying to sell to businesses so they can go and do things faster and more and you know create more you know, right. nuggets, whatever. What if you could build a data product for education in education that students can use themselves? Um you know, you see university uh, students using like uh GG plot or uh, uh you know, what's the other one that uh, begins with S SPSS, like okay, because yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. this is what they're given, right? Like, what if you could build wow. something? For that, now, for academia, now, for, like pop, for that, like having yeah. Python and put a D three like, are you kidding me? Like, yeah, just... yeah, exactly, exactly, and and something that can abstract those complex things. It would sit on top of that, absolutely. It would need to be open source, absolutely, for it to make yeah. any sort of mileage. But that's that's the sort of space I'm thinking because at the moment, yeah. those people only they live off education licenses or they live off other things that you know. They don't really love, quite fit their use case. So, yeah. I, I love to get people be before they get to Excel and get into the... Yeah, <laughs> yeah kind of exactly. Well, <laughs> yeah. The, the one I do say to people all the time that's more obvious is, would anyone in the world have thought about helping people with presentations going, you know how you should get people's attention? It's a title and then a bunch of bullets of text. That's the way they yeah. do it. Like in PowerPoint. Like, had they not built it that way, people wouldn't have made all these terrible presentations. Terrible mistakes. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. The yeah, tail yeah. wagged that dog. And I often wonder how much Excel, um, Has well, the same. BusyCalc for whoever, that even predates yeah. me, but whatever, Lotus yeah. 1, 2, 3, whatever, like that spreadsheet style, like, you know what I mean? Like we all yeah. learned it because we, I'm sorry, we all think that way because that's, that's how, the way that's, we that's the first thing right. we think. Yeah. yeah. That's where we learn. But maybe there's another way. So anyway, yeah. that's no, that's a that's great answer. I, I love that. Answer. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Kirk, it's been brilliant. I've kept yeah, you for two hours. So it's uh, I've you know uh, been an absolute privilege. We should chat again. I'll make sure um, I find some time. And yeah, I look forward to sort of all your comments and uh, you know whatever whatever other pieces of content you make. Maybe another book. Maybe more videos. Um, highly, highly look forward to them. Thank you. It was a blast. <laughs> <laughs> Good work. All right. Take care. Okay. Thanks, soon.